now on BBC One Scotland Sports Scene, introduced by Doogie Donnelly. It's a fixture which produced 17 goals in three meetings last season with plenty of excitement and controversy thrown in. We're live today at Easter Road for the Edinburgh Derby, Hibs against Hearts. And we're also at Dens Park where Dundee, safely back from their European win in Albania, take on Dunfermline. You'll see the goals around five o'clock. Good afternoon. The season's only a week old and we're not exactly short of talking points and I'm sure this afternoon's big match will throw up a few more. Gordon Smith and Stuart Lovell are with me to chew over the ins and outs of the Edinburgh Derby and of course we also welcome your contribution as well. If you'd like to email us or text us in any football talking point then by all means do so. The details are on the screen. But of course we always like to kick off with uh, the early team news so let's uh, head straight to Easter Road then and our commentary team Sandy Clark and Rob McLean. Afternoon lads. And as you say Dougie it was, it was some game last season wasn't it? 5-1, 2-1, 4-4 the three matches between this pair. And of course this was the fixture which kicked off our live coverage last season. That's right Rob, uh, I'm sure the Hibs fans, fans have won the reverse this time. Hearts had a great season last year and that was probably the springboard that kicked them off so I'm sure they'll be trying to do the same again but Hibs are about to, to get revenge. OK let's answer some questions with a look at the teams. Starting with Hibbs, and Hibbs make one change from the team which won at Dundee United last weekend. Tom McManus comes into the starting lineup at the expense of Stephen Glass. He'll offer strike support to the youthful pair up front, Scott Brown and Derek Reardon, who are just 37 between them. They're very young, aren't they? But they're very enthusiastic. They play well together. But I think every Hibs player out there today have to do well, Rob. In recent times, Hearts have had a big advantage over them, winning here a fortnight ago, also winning here uh, last season in the league. So they're about for revenge, as I said earlier today. But to get that, everyone, every one of those players, 1-11, has got to play well. Well, Mark De Vries has given Hearts the biggest possible boost by telling Craig Levine he's fit to play despite the groin injury which has troubled him since last weekend. So it's the team which beat Aberdeen. 20-year-old Robert Sloan keeps his place and Paul Hartley will get a warm welcome against his old team. It's a very strong-looking Hearts team. Uh, Mark De Vries, that's a massive uh, bonus to Craig Levine, the fact that he's fit. But I just wonder how fit he is, Robbie. He certainly came off last week. He was struggling a little bit, but he's so important to this team that that's why he's in the start line-up today. So just over half an hour away, then, the first Edinburgh derby of the season. We're looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, fellas. Let's uh, get a few thoughts from Stuart and Gordon. And Stuart, your old team desperate to get a win in an Edinburgh derby. To me, they look pretty good middle to front, but maybe at the back they've, they've got to be more solid than they were last year. Well, that's true. I mean, they, uh, Bobby's had to make a lot of changes uh, in, in the sort of 18 months he's been at the club. And it's difficult to, I think you always want to start with your defence to make yourself a, a solid unit, first of all, and, and not concede goals. And having had to make changes even, even since the summer, um, you know, that's, that's maybe where they'll be at their weakest. Yeah, but a lot of promise in those teenage strikers. They've got four of them, haven't they? Well, mm. yeah, they've got a lot of cover in, in that position, certainly. And I think uh, both sets of strikers, it's uh, a new partnership for Hearts and for Hibs. And um, I think there's a lot of promise for, for both sets of players. Mm. Hearts they'll just look a very solid, strong side, Gordon, don't they? They do, and uh, you know, not many changes from last year. They've brought in a couple of players. They've both made the starting lineup today. You know, they, they, they've got Wynas, who had done a, a really good job in the first division, and uh, you know, he's proved to be a goal scorer. And he's he's starting in front of Andy Kirk, mm. and uh, Paul Hartley getting an opportunity as well. But they're strong, and they're strong at the back. I mean, they've got Scotland's two current central defenders there in Presley and Webster, so that, that's pretty strong in itself to have those two players. And, and that'll be a good test today to see how they, they play and see how the youngsters that Hibs have got up front play against them. All right, well, looking forward to it. It gave us some terrific entertainment last year. I'm sure it will do so again this year. But let's uh, get to Dens Park and uh, look ahead to another very attractive game this afternoon. Dundee against Dunfermline. I'm looking forward to this one, Jim. I'm sure you are too. 
it looks a good one, Dougie, I have to say. You know, Dundee have spent 40 grand putting a new uh, pitch in. It's been seeded straight from the start through the summer. It's in fantastic condition. Both managers agree. Only a couple of changes to the sides, and that is the fact that Brent Sancho, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, will make his debut for Dundee, and Lee Bullen returns for Dunfermline. Great uh, draw for Dunfermline against Celtic last week, 0-0. That's boosted their confidence. Dundee, of course, a terrific start this season. 3-0 at Motherwell, and that great UEFA Cup result in Albania midweek. The spirits are high. They're expecting a big, big crowd. There's always a good football match between these two, they like to play it on the deck. Big crowd expected, good crowd coming from Fife. We're expecting a thriller here today. All right, Jim, let's hope you're right. So we'll bring you an update, of course, throughout the afternoon and goals, as I say, around five o'clock. And our big game, Hibs against Hearts, kicks off at three. But uh, let's begin our roundup of yesterday's highlights with our Aberdeen Rangers game. And sadly, we're becoming used to controversy in this fixture. And yesterday's game, once again, was marred when a supporter ran onto the pitch and appeared to run the full length of the pitch and appeared to aim a kick at Fernando Rickson before he was finally wrestled to the ground by police. It uh, provoked a furious reaction from the Aberdeen. Chief Executive Derek Wynas. Certainly, we're looking for the fiscal and the court system uh, to take a very hard stance on this, and we're really urgent to make a real example of this. Also, the club this year, we changed our ticketing regulations that allows us to take civil action against somebody like this as well. So, we're going to be pursuing that possibly over the next couple of days. So, we really are going to do everything we can to make an example of this complete fool, and uh, we're going to hold him up and name and shame him. Yeah, strong words there from Keith Wyner's Grampian Police confirmed that a man was arrested and a report will go to the Procurator Fiscal. It's uh, become a very volatile fixture these days, Gordon, hasn't it? Well, it's a shame this fixture is still throwing up these kind of incidents because I know that both sides are working very hard to try and dampen mm -hmm. everything in, uh, regarding the clubs. It's fine to have a, uh, you know, the, the competition between them in a football sense, but the, there's been some stupid things happening. But in fairness to Aberdeen, they've condemned this and that's good. And uh, there's not much you can do about a lone fan who wants to take this kind of action. I mean, the, the club it's a shame when the, if, if anything would happen to Aberdeen regarding it, but the, both clubs, I see, are, are doing their best to try and quell the problem. They are. Well, let's uh, pick up the highlights of the football in yesterday's lunchtime meeting and a look firstly at the, the two team lineups. Uh, Steve Patterson, of course, was looking for Aberdeen's first win in 20 games against Rangers. Uh, the Dons boss brought in Darren Mackey to support a, a front two of David Zadrilic and Scott Booth back at Pataudry and facing Rangers for the first time since 1997. Now, Henning Berg made his debut for Rangers in place of the injured Craig Moore. Michael Moles was past fit, though. Fernando Rickson started at right back with Christian Nerlinger alongside Arteta and Ferguson in midfield. Commentator Ken McRobb. Aberdeen, a chance to break. It's Sheeran for Booth. Knocked wide. Kirkin comes inside. Ships across, and the header from the village was on target, but Stefan Kloss was there. Breakaway for Aberdeen, good ball delivered in, but the header, no joy. Zadilich and Berg, Zadilich with a chance! Not one for the second time, and he scored for Aberdeen. Long ball by Maguire, straight down the middle. Zadilic beat Berg, Klaus blocked, and Zadilic scores his first competitive goal for Aberdeen. The Australian said he came to Pataudry looking to get goals and looking to get back into the national squad. He's going about it the right way. Hart with a throw. Headed away by Paul. Mackey steps in, left foot shot across goal! Scott Booth was inches away from converting that one. Mackey stepped in, fired it across goal, and Scott Booth was just a fraction away from getting the contact that would have been Aberdeen two ahead. Sheeran. Oh, good play by Paul Sheeran. Delivers across the face, Paul's there, chested down by Mackey. Looking for support, he finds it in Tosh. Turns, left foot shot, it's a drill, it's just with a touch, and again, that was so close. Rangers living so dangerously at the moment. Michael <laughs> Olds robs his head, and Rangers have a free kick. Michael Ball in pole position to strike this one. Thanks. 
He just touches it, ball left with it. Oh, off the bar, but into the net. And it's Ronald De Boer who has equalised for Rangers. A spectacular left foot free kick taken by Michael Ball, crashing against the bar, but coming back out. And De Boer putting the ball into the back of the net. The Aberdeen defenders unable to do anything about it. Scott Booth attempted on the line to flick it over the bar, but without success, Aberdeen won, Rangers won. Rickson strides forward, Arteta out on the touchline, takes over, cuts inside, tries to find Moles, back to goal, lays it back. Moles again, still inside that penalty area. Arteta with a chance and a goal! Brilliantly worked, Arteta and Moles combining. There were red bodies all around them, but it didn't prevent Mikel Arteta scoring his third goal of the season and putting Rangers ahead by two goals to one. Nerlinger. That's enough to get it to De Boer. Good play by Ronald De Boer. That one cut out. And Aberdeen with Anderson will get this one clear, but only to Ball. The pressure stays on. Michael Ball coming inside, still in possession. But, oh, there's real nastiness now. And things have erupted on the field. Michael Ball involved. Darlinga was uh, previously involved in a tussle. And Mike McCurry quickly moves in. Well, Nerlinga initially went down. And then Hart seemed to get involved with Ball. Yellow card for Ball, yellow card for Anderson. And it looks as if that's it, and there isn't any point complaining. Arteta. For Moles. He's inside Maguire, lovely ball through Arteta. Can he make it? Three. Saved again by Priest. Ferguson for Arteta. Now Rickson. Lovely play by Moles. It's 3 1 to Rangers. Michael Moles knew exactly where the goal was. He turned and drilled it in. And despite Priest getting a touch to it, there was nothing he could do to prevent Moles from scoring and giving Rangers a lead by three goals to one. Rickson. Teta. Good ball to Rickson. He's got space, he's got Moles inside him. Michael Moles! Oh, what a save by David Priest. Perfect ball delivered in by Rickson. Moles did all he had to, but Priest was there to prevent him making it 4 1. Again, but Rickson can't take any chances. Paul Shearer with the corner. Swerves out, and the header cleared off the line. Uh, not once, but twice. Was the goal given? Dillamo thought that it was across the line. The linesman, though, and the referee decide to play on. And the referee has given the goal. Well, total confusion there. But the linesman and referee who are in communication with each other now. Linesman confirming that Dillamu's header had crossed the line. Well, I think particularly first half, you know, I thought we played really well and, you know, we got our noses in front and, and we're competing all over the park well. And to turn in 2-1 uh, down was a wee bit harsh, I felt, you know, but uh, second half, I, I, I absolutely no question. Rangers, I felt, were far a better team and we got off a bit light. There's always a talking point with Rangers. This week, among other things, it's been Barry Ferguson. How hard do you want to fight, or will you fight, to keep him at Ibrox? I want him just to stay. Barry knows that. He knows how much I want him to stay. And uh, we'll keep fighting to try and, and persuade him that this is the right place for him. 
And like McLeish, understandably concerned about the possibility of losing his captain. It is, of course, only a possibility at this stage. And uh, Alec McLeish would also be concerned about the injury to Peter Lovenkrantz, who uh, appears to have suffered uh, a fairly serious knee injury yesterday, which could lead to him being out for three or four weeks. Now, Stuart, as a man who's unfortunately kind of used to knee injuries, <laughs> what about this one? Yeah, Which well, we were, as he comes down, really, doesn't it? Yeah, we were discussing the injury, and, and, and obviously the player's reaction doesn't look good there. But I think there's always a lot of strain when you're when you're off balance and you're trying to put one leg out just to just to help yourself uh, land properly. And I think there's an awful lot of force going into to the to the through the knee. Um, and having had a lot of problems with both knees in, in the last couple of seasons, I know that it, it doesn't take much to, you know, to cause a, an injury to the knee. I think he could be out for a while with that. Yeah, and it, it, he's important. He's an enigmatic player in a lot of ways, but he does have a happy knack of getting goals, doesn't he? Well, he's, he's got uh, searing pace, and it's very hard to play against people mm. like that. I think that um, certainly mm. since he's had the vote of confidence from Advocat and, and subsequently Alex McLeish, he's really come on to a game, and I think he's... He's a very important player for Rangers. Yeah, as indeed is Craig Moore, who of course was missing yesterday as well. All right, let's uh, look ahead to uh, Easter Road. It's Hibs against Hearts. It's our big live match this afternoon. Kick-off just about 20 minutes or so away. That's our live game this afternoon on Sports Scene. But uh, we'll continue our uh, look back to yesterday's Bank of Scotland Premier League matches with uh, the game between Celtic and uh, Dundee United. Let's take a look at the two team lineups there. Martin O'Neill rested, Rab Douglas, Paul Lambert, and Neil Lennon. And was also without the injured Johan Mialbe and John Hartson and the suspended Chris Sutton. Jackie McNamara played in central midfield with Liam Miller and Stan Petrov on either side of him. Dundee United were without the suspended Barry Robson sent off last week, but all of Ian McCall's other new summer signings were in place, with much likely to depend on that midfield trio of Mark Kerr, Derek McInnes and Charlie Miller. Referee at Celtic Park yesterday was Alan Freeland, and uh, our commentator is Paul Mitchell. Charlie Miller receives his usual reception. Patterson puts the ball there, and that's a chance! And it's going to be cleared by Stanislav Varga, and Danny Griffin almost had United ahead. Two minutes gone, Jim Patterson swung the ball in, Agnes Hedman came for it. Getting to it first was Dundee United in the shape of Danny Griffin, and Varga saved a certain goal. Stadio Gatton who picks up, McInnes was ahead of him. Here's Miller. Short to Petrov. Pass was better. That's nicely done by Maloney. He's set back up again. He's going through. Shot Maloney! Celtic take the lead after 11 and a half minutes. And it's Sean Maloney working with Henrik Larsson. Sean Maloney. Danny Griffin there again. Alan Thompson plays it. And Edmund Lawson! Goalkeeper may have got a touch. The ball rattled off the crossbar. Archibald. Head flick on it. Rick Larson's there. Larson with a chance. Penalty kick. Paul Gallagher doesn't agree. And he now squares up to him. Rick Larson. Ball was played in. Larson turned away. Got the touch, and Paul Gallagher, I think, will have too many complaints. Alan Thompson's had a bad run of penalties. And he ends that bad run. Sends Paul Gallagher the wrong way, and Celtic, well, you could say.
to the rock up all three points just before half time. Sonic three, Dundee United nil. Petrov continues to show his tricks. Onto Varga. Thought about the right foot shot. on the shot, was set up by Stilio Petrov. Varga looked like he was going to change his mind for a second. And rattled it off the bottom post. Now Didier Gatt driving towards the box, Miller. Continue to work very, very hard to defend. Celtic interchange again. Ball forward, referee moves out the way. Celtic slowly gaining ground. Thompson into Larson, back to McNamara. scored five goals. First one very, very important, great goal as it was too. Um, Sean Maloney putting it in the net. And um, other than a, in a moment of anxiety when uh, we had to hack one off the line at nil-nil, um, then everything everything went well. We were trying to build and United into a team that's going to challenge these teams. So it's a learning process for some of the younger ones. I thought two or three young ones did very well today. Colin Samuel in particular did excellent. So, uh, Celtic were fully merited their win today and we'll lick our wounds and, and go away and look forward to next week. Yes, five goals for Celtic, some real crackers amongst them, Jackie McNamara's in particular. But one banner on display at Celtic Park yesterday summed up the feelings of certainly many Celtic fans. Let Martin spend what he's earned. Uh, some of the emails we're getting in agree with that criticism, but others are advocating the more prudent approach. It seems now, Gordon, that old firm fans are obviously all reading the business pages because they're <laughs> full of advice for the boards of directors, aren't they? Yeah, I think, I think that if they do read the business pages, they know that, that Celtic have made a loss in the last year. And uh, although Martin O'Neill uh, you know, took them to a, a very successful UEFA Cup run, Celtic ended up losing money. So that, it's not as if it's... Uh, you, what you have to determine the difference between uh, revenue and profit and the uh, clubs like Celtic and Rangers aren't making any profit at the moment. And uh, you know, if the money's not there to spend, it's not there. I mean, but I think it showed yesterday that Celtic have got a strong squad. Certainly for the Scottish game, a number of players you mentioned before who weren't playing yesterday. You know, top class players who would be first choice players and sure. yet Celtic sent a team out there and, and won comfortably. Absolutely. Difficult times as we all know. Now, Livingston against Mother were coming up at half time but first let's bring you the highlights from yesterday's match at Rugby Park. Kilmarnock against Partick Thistle with Kerry Dunidson. Rugby Park's always prickly for the Jags. They haven't won here since February 94, but new boy Andy Thompson tried his best early on to be a thorn in the side of the home defence. Pricked into action, Kilmarnock were shown the way to go by Danny Invincible. Maybe his name scared the Thistle players as they backed off at first. Then from Derek White's block, keeper Jakub Mikkelsen did his best to be invincible too. The Aussie was right at the heart of things in the first half, as Killy ticked along nicely, and he combined with Chris Boyd to set up a chance for Gary McSwigan. Yeah. 
Then Invincible really was put to the test when he had to sustain this late tackle from David Lilly. Referee Willie Young deemed it serious foul play and promptly produced a red card for the Thistle defender. It was the tackle from behind which upset the ref. Only 18 minutes played and the Jags would have to soldier on with 10 men. And their manager didn't like the decision one bit. The players didn't take it too badly though and reacted by giving themselves a half-time lead. But Kilmarnock will be asking themselves how the smallest player on the pitch, James Grady, was left unmarked six yards out to score with a header. Things weren't going well for Kilmarnock and were about to get a whole lot worse. Danny Invincible had already gone off when midfielder Gary Locke got hurt as well, also on the ankle, following a tackle from David Rowson. Locke left the field on a stretcher and both he and Invincible were then taken to hospital to find out just how bad the injuries were. They'll both have been cheered up by news of how well the team played at the start of the second half. Killy were level within a minute of the restart after Martin Hardy finished off a terrific move. Trust an ex-Thistle player to needle the Jags after a nicely weighted setup from Stevie Fulton. Ten-man Thistle went in search of some retribution and felt they should have had a penalty when Sean Hesse got a hold of James Grady's shirt. The ref, though, saw nothing in it. And nothing is exactly what Thistle were left with when Chris Boyd hammered in the winner on the hour. Spies from Rules were up to watch him. They'll have been impressed. So will he stay or will he go? Hopefully I can just keep, carry on doing what I've been doing and hopefully we'll see what happens to there. But I mean, at this moment in time, I come out for him. That's all I'm going to interest in. It's probably the only time that we, your players have got a winning bonus for getting beat because I think the under bonus today. Um, they were magnificent. I think if you four or five players in the part of the day were all Thistle players, wanted to win the game, wanted to play football, we're the best team, and we feel hard done by once again. Well, with some justification, Jerry was also furious about the sending off of David Lilly. He did say that he'd be making a phone call to Willie Young if, after seeing the pictures, he decided that Willie Young was right. Well, after seeing that, we reckon Willie Young was right. That was a straight red. Make that phone call, Jerry. Hibs against Hearts is our big live match this afternoon. A three o'clock kick-off. We're not all that far away. The fans are arriving. I've seen busier uh, crowds outside a Hibs Hearts match, but maybe they're all already inside the stadium. Bobby Williamson certainly is. Here's what he has to say about the game. He's talking to Chick. Hearts one these days, haven't you? <laughs> I hope it's today, Chick. It's, it's long overdue, in my opinion. Although Hearts will disagree with that. Uh, I felt the 4 4 game, we were certainly on top, uh, especially first half. Uh, they got a penalty, which TV evidence seemed to suggest it wasn't when uh, the player even got up and tried to chase the ball down. And uh, these wee things add up and uh, got Hearts back into the game. And unfortunately, we couldn't hold on at the death to win the game. So, yeah, we're due a result. Do you think there is a psychological thing about this the longer it goes? No, not as far as I'm concerned. Psychology, I can't even spell it. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, I don't think so. It's football and uh, we, we've got football players there that can go out and express themselves and I'm hoping they can do that today. It's good that it's an occasion that's live in the BBC and sell-out crowd, the pitch is in perfect condition. I mean, a real in festival week for, for the game to, to, to show itself to the country. Yeah, tremendous and it's a full crowd as well. I think everybody's turning up today and uh, there'll be at capacity. My only concern is you're standing behind the technical area trying to give us our words, our words of wisdom. I think the way you've been going you should take it. No, <laughs> uh, you're actually trying to translate what we're trying to say and uh, I think that's yeah, impossible since you don't know. <laughs> Psychological battle, <laughs> you're going through a bad spell. Thank you Bobby. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if Bobby will still be smiling at the end. We'll find out. But uh, let's pick out one or two key players. As always, God has been casting his eye over the two squads. And the uh, well, first man you've gone for is a man that Hibs want to unload, actually, isn't he? They do want to unload him. But uh, I just feel in the, in the games I've seen at the end of last season, and uh, I haven't seen this season, but I saw the highlights of the game against Dundee United. I think Grant Bredner has been an outstanding player for them. I think that uh, you know he's a real driving force in the midfield. He's got uh, ability to, to keep the ball close in. He can score goals. Doesn't score enough goals. Maybe, but he's got tremendous uh, work rate in there and, and he's got very good ability and I, I just think that you know, he's a player, Hearts are quite strong in that area but he's the player they'll have to keep quiet in my opinion because I think that the way Brem has been playing then uh, he could be a key player for them today. And the reason Stuart that they do want to move him on I'm quite sure is financial, it's nothing to do with, uh, with his skill but let's just quickly move on and uh, take a look at that and a bow that man on the heart side, he is fit, he will play Mark De Vries though. Yeah, a big boost for Hearts, uh, De Vries being fit such a big strong player, I mean he's had 
a great start to his career for, right from the very start, getting four goals in a, in a derby game. But you know, he's a player that you can't uh, leave quiet for a second. And I think that's an area where Hibs did not quite get their back four up to scratch yet. And I think they might struggle against the likes of De Vries. No matter who they, they partner him with, he's capable of scoring. He's good in the ground for such a big guy. He's got tremendous strength in the air as well. And I think that, uh, as I say, he'll be a, a real key player. That, but, Hibs have found them difficult to deal with in the past now. I'm sure they might again today. So just a, a quick word on these two players, Stuart. You admire them both, I take it? Yeah, I've obviously played alongside Grant. He's a very talented player and probably the most creative one they've got. They'll be looking for a big performance from him. And I think De Vries, has, even if he's not fully fit, I'm sure Craig Levine is playing him because he knows that uh, he's had a, you know, a very good... Um, impact in the derby games and they'll be looking for the same again from him. Yeah, you'll have to go back to virtually a year to the day in that first Edinburgh derby of last season. So, will one of those to be the man of the match or will it be someone else entirely? Who do you think? Sandy Clark will make his choice as always and some splendid prizes for you if uh, your choice agrees with Sandy's. Uh, the signed shirt from today's man of the match, a family match day out. That includes travel, lunch and uh, the match of your choice and we've also got a digital radio as well. 09011 Oh nine double oh one double one oh eight six one calls just twenty five pence. Competition closes obviously just before the final whistle. That's our Bank of the Scot Bank of Scotland Man of the Match uh, competition for this afternoon. Right, let's turn our attention then to the Jambos and uh, Craig Levine's side who have had the Indian sign over Hibs in uh, recent Edinburgh derbies and their fans will be confident of another victory even if it is at Easter Road this afternoon. Here's uh, what the Hearts manager thinks about the big game. You and the fourth official today is Dougie McDonald, so clearly you want to apologise to him for things you said in the past. Um, I, I've not got any comment to make about uh, the situation with SFA. Um, I will, in the fullness of time, speak uh, speak my mind. Well, I could grill you with that all day, and I'm sure you still won't turn the corner, so let's talk the match today. The good news for you is an unchanged side. You go in with the Festival Cup under your in, in the, in the trophy cabinet. Does that give you a boost for this situation? No, I don't think so. I think it, it, it was treated as a pre-season game, although it was competitive. Um, yeah, we did want to win the game, but I don't think any game that you've played previously against uh, against Hibs uh, has any bearing on the, on the next game. So we'll have to start again. We'll have to do all the basics well, and uh, we've got to compete. And the fact that they haven't beaten you since Moses was a boy, was that a factor to you? Yeah, at least... These things take uh, swings from one side to the other, and, and for a spell there, Hibs were, were well on top with regard to derby matches. We're, we've got a little run going, but it can change at any time, and, and we're well aware of that. Thanks, Craig. All the best. Okay. So, who's going to win it? Let's get the thoughts of Stuart and Gordon. What do you think, Stuart? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no one likes to see people sit on the fence. I would love to see Hibs win it, but I just think Hearts are stronger in every area of the pitch. I would expect them to win this game. Really? You're, you're that confident? Yeah. Yeah, I think that you know, aside from the keeper, I think that uh, they have a. Uh, a very good strike force. I think they're, they're strong in middle and, and defensively. They, you know, they have a good good centre back partnership. And um, mm -hmm. I would be interested to see how the Hibs uh, forwards do against them because if Hibs uh, get good service up to the strikers, they could cause them some problems. But yeah. but it starts for you, Gordon. In a word, uh, it's not sitting in the fence. I think it'll be a score draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two each, three each, four each. Yeah, <laughs> Something any like one that. of those. Actually, there was a time I have to tell you when the Edinburgh derby was known around here as Hibs nil, Hearts nil. But happily, these days are long gone. Fans will be celebrating today in the first Edinburgh Derby of the new season. Let's find out. It's all live here in the BBC and the commentary box at Easter Road. Sandy Clark and Rob McLean. Well, a festival of football, you might say, was the Edinburgh Derby last season. It kicked off BBC Scotland's live match coverage with the Mark de Vries show it was. 5-1 was followed by 2-1 hearts and then 4 each. 17 goals in three games. Never a dull moment in this fixture, it seems. These are the two teams. 
Hibs make one change from the side which uh, won at Dundee United 2-1 last weekend. Tom McManus came on as a sub and scored the winning goal, so he starts. Stephen Glass will open up the match on the bench. And up front, two youngsters, 18-year-old Scott Brown, 20-year-old Derek Reardon. I think it's important, Rob, when you look at the Hibs team, the back four have to get it right, especially when we're dealing with the presence of Mark DeFries. And I think there's also a big onus in the young strikers, Brown and Reardon. I'm sure Bobby Williams' has instructions to those two. Don't let Hart settle at the back, don't let them build for them the back. If they can start to do that, work hard at that, then they'll, they'll kill a lot of the threat from Hearts. And the name on the Hearts team sheet to cheer all Jambo supporters is number nine, Mark De Vries. He's told Craig Levine he's fit to play despite the groin injury, which has been troubling some. So this is the team which beat Aberdeen. 20-year-old Robert Sloan plays, and the new boys are Paul Hartley and Dennis Wynas. I think, I'm not quite sure, Rob, just how fit Mark De Vries is, but Craig Levine's obviously taking a chance with him. But when you look at Levine, he's developed a very strong, well-organised and settled team unit. Look how solid they are through the middle. Presley Webster at the back, stamp seven in the midfield, and that man defeats up front. Well, it's the oldest rivalry in Scottish football, older even than the old firm. It dates back to 1875, and in fact, in British terms, only the Nottingham rivalry has lasted longer. Notts County against Nottingham Forest, and Hearts and Hibs second only to those two in terms of uh, how long they've been deadly rivals. Stuart Dougal chatting with Stephen Presley at the head of the line for Hearts and the giant figure of Teppi Moylanen just behind him. A uh, lot as ever will rest on the two goalkeepers, Moylanen, the Finn for Hearts and Daniel Anderson, the Swede for Hibs, but just listen to the roar which will greet these two teams. <laughs> the atmosphere full of passion as you come to expect when Hibs play Hearts, and it's the first experience of this, and you can almost see it in his eyes there from Dennis Wynas, who scored 80 goals for Inverness Cali Thistle after leaving Pataudry, 27 of them last season. Can he bring that sort of strike rate to the Premier League? Paul Hartley is a former Hibs player, and I think uh, he will know it by the time this match is finished. He'll play on the right side of midfield. He won the First Division Championship with Hibs when Alec McLeish was the manager. There's Scott Brown, just 18, finished last season in fire with three goals in his last two matches. It's only his fifth start for the club. Uh, Derek Reardon has played just 12 times, and he was a goal scorer against Dundee United last Saturday. He's just 20, but he's the senior partner there. Google, the man in the middle. The first Edinburgh derby of the season is underway. Can it live up to its pre-match billing when you consider all the thrills and spills we had last season? Well, Rob, obviously, two weeks ago, the Festival Cup, I know it was classed as a pre-season friendly, but I tell you what, it was really competitive. Both teams really went for it. Hearts fully deserve to win that day. I'm sure they'll want to try and pick up with the left off. Matt Doombe being put under pressure by Mark De Vries, and that's a bad clearance from Daniel Anderson. And how fortunate does he feel that that cannon back to him off Wynas when the repercussions could have been much more serious? He's very lucky here, the big goalkeeper. This is a simple clearance as he puts his foot through the ball, completely makes a hash of it, and Wynas not quite on his toes to take advantage. Well, we remember a couple of seasons ago. Releases De La Cruz scored after 36 seconds of the Edinburgh derby. Well, if uh, Hearts had been able to punish Hibs there, that would have been even quicker. And that just demonstrates the nerves which are jangling in among all these players pretty much. Here come Hearts again with De Vries. And again, Linus was almost in.
Hibbs defence being put under real pressure. There, yeah, Rob, it's, uh, you can see the confidence in the hearts team right from the start of this match. McCann's cross, put on by Wynas. Ian Murray heads it clear, back it comes. And there's real uncertainty about the way Hibbs are defending here. And it's disappointing for the youngster Robert Sloan that he couldn't have put that on target because Hibbs at the back are creaking. Just showing a little bit of inexperience there, young Sloan. That man Anderson, he's under pressure right from the start of this match. But Sloan, if he just holds on for half a second there, I'm sure that ball would have dropped for him and he may well have got it on target. Good header from Presley. Commanding in central defence for Hearts. And up he goes again, not so certain this time, but Alan Maybury's helping out and behind him. Hearts looking to start defensively the way Hibbs haven't. I mentioned Rob at the start of the game, the Hibbs back four, lots of responsibility on them, but when you look at the Hearts back four, they're very settled, they know each other very, very well. Great turn from Derek Reardon, good block from Andy Webster, lovely scale from the youngster. That's magnificent from Webster. It's half a chance here. Good turn from Reardon. Gets the shot, it would have been on target, but Webster read it so well. A quick confab between Reardon and McManus. Reardon with the corner. Headed clear, only as far as Alan Orman. Flicked on by Ian Murray. It's beyond Brebner and through to Moylan. Well, it's a rip-roaring start. We've played less than three and a half minutes. Packed with incident already. It's empty end stuff, Rob. Just what we're looking for. It's a handball. Matt Doombe probably had to put an arm on that so, to so prevent to it getting through to Dennis Wynas' yellow card. You can understand Stuart Dugal's decision there. Doombe's actually his last man. If that ball goes beyond them, Linus is an opportunity. As a defender, Rob, that puts Doombe under lots of pressure now. He's got to be really careful with the tackles for the rest of this match. Bobby Williamson, we hear, is in trouble with the fourth official for voicing his thoughts a bit too directly. We'll hear from, about that in a minute from Chip. But let's get this free kick taken. Paul Hartley is shaping up to strike this. Blocked by Grant Brebner. Slipped as he cleared. This is the handball, Mark Defries, great header. It's almost his shoulder, top part of his arm. Could have got away with it another day, but Stuart Dugal obviously had a very good view on it. I think Matt Doombe was trying to persuade Stuart Dugal that his chest was wider than he thought. <laughs> I think Bobby's complaints the fact that it's a yellow card. Well, let's hear from Chick about what exactly happened down in that technical area. Uh, that's exactly what uh, Sandy was saying, that Bobby was unhappy about the yellow card. This early in the game, and a real go at Dougie McDonald. Dougie McDonald had to calm him down. The irony is, of course, that Dougie McDonald is the man who's uh, taking the wrath of uh, Craig Levine earlier in the season. It's going to be interesting down here today. There's a dugout, there's Dougie McDonald, the man in the middle. And uh, I think a lot of entertainment can be down here this afternoon, Rob. Dougie McDonald just popular wherever he goes, it seems. So we heard all about it there from Bobby Williamson. It's a great start from Hearts. Determined. Positive. But not the cross Mark De Vries wanted after he got himself to the byline in a useful looking position. He actually wanted Mark De Vries to be inside the box for the cross. But a great play from Stamp to set up De Vries first to the ball. And that's a poor one from the big striker. But as you say, Rob, Hearts have started really well. Their first to every ball at this moment in time. Paul Stamp getting in front of Vries there. Clean. That man De Vries down the left. They both got off to a winning start last weekend, of course. Hibbs up at Dundee United, Hearts at home to Aberdeen. But this match matters so much. Not just about three points, it's all about pride. And all about the ability for whichever set of supporters it may be to walk through the streets of the capital with head held high. Brebner 
Offside was Derek Reardon. Taylor Cardinal robs a free kick. Scott yeah, Severin. against Scott Severin. So it's a booking a piece. It's a pullback, Rob. You watch it here, Grant Brendan. He's got away from Severn. You see him tugging him back there. That's why he's received the yellow card from Stuart Dougal. So that's Doombe and Severin, two central defenders booked already. And as Chris Innes knows, getting a yellow early on can prove expensive. Rebner's free kick carefully played in for Jakobis. And flicked into the arms of Tepi Moylanen. They went to school together, this and Moylanen. Not many people know that. <laughs> Too slow. Loses possession, hustled out of it. One man to Reardon and out of Severin. It's being played at a furious pace. No change there, but uh, very little time on the ball available. Well, that's what happens in der uh, derby matches, Rob. I've played quite a few of these ones myself, and they're great games to play in. Both sets of fans love this occasion as well, especially if you win it. That's well played by Brevner in a tight situation. Got his pass away to Gary Smith. Alan Mabry clears. And Zambonardi has to go back to collect. That's good play from Yannick Zambonardi. Lovely pass, Stu McManus. And Austin McCann has to knock it behind. And hand Hibbs a corner, another one. Good play from Hibbs, Zambonardi. Takes control of the situation here. It's a switch of play, it's a marvellous ball. And watch this first touch from Tom McManus. It's a good touch, forcing McCann to give away the corner kick. This Zambonardi, Murray and Smith. Manis in the background, all there, all inside the area. In from Reardon. Flicked away by Hartley. It's Ian Murray. Didn't really catch the shot, Stephen Presley clears. Both Murray and Presley will be on the plane to Norway for the Scotland game, live on the BBC in midweek. Murray, of course, with the under-21 squad. Back from Dumbe to Anderson, who had that shaky start. And breathed a massive sigh of relief. And his mistake came to nothing. Free kick against Andy Webster. Brebner to Zambonardi. Lofted beyond Reardon. An unchallenged header for Austin McCann. And given back to him by Robert Sloan. Just turned 20. That's another free kick yep. against Dumbe. It is. I think, Rob, when you look at the way Hibs are playing at the moment, I've got small strikers. Onside, Paul Hartley, can he catch it? Yes, he can. Poor ball in from Paul Hartley, having done the difficult bit. It's a poor pass. Paul wouldn't be too happy with this one. But look at the time he's got here, Rob. He's lots of time to pick out the, the Hearts player. It really makes a mess of that one. That's well won by Orman, helped out by McManus. Now this, Zamanardi, with a little bit of space, a little bit of time. In for Reardon, McCann had to hurry, looking for better communication there from his goalkeeper. McManus was ready to bounce. Well, it's danger for Hearts at the back end. McCann is not too sure where the goalkeeper is. Certainly doesn't know where Tom McManus is. It takes a sensible option. have everyone inside the penalty box to defend this, to help out Tepi Moylanen. Derek Reardon plays it short to Tom McManus. The plan didn't quite come off. Didn't work at all there. Great communications between McManus and Reardon. Obviously one from the training ground. 
I take it it worked better on the training <laughs> ground. <laughs> I think what that means, Rob, you have to go and practice more often. Rivers pass deflected, Maybury's headed away. And that's a tackle from the back. On Wynas by Brebner, which is punished with the free kick. Yes, the Hibs fans remember Paul Hartley. That wouldn't bother Paul, he can handle it. You worked with him at Hamilton and signed him for St Johnston, Sandy. I've him a long, long time as a young player, he was a very, very talented guy. Great right foot, strikes the ball so well, great pace. And he's onside. Good challenge, though, from Gary Smith. Tight bit of marking. And that's a hip throw. The Frenchman, Zan Bernardi. Maybe he's header. And a free kick given against Mark de Vries for a nudge on Jakobis when the ball was in the air. Well, Craig Levine, I think we'll have a lot to say in the next few days about uh, his ongoing dispute with the SFA over non-payment. It was a £1,000 fine, now it's 2000 It's a bit like he wants to be a millionaire, it's going ever higher. And uh, Dougie McDonald, the fourth official today, was the referee who bore the brunt of Levine's criticism at the tail end of last season uh, when that little saga started. No goals at Dens so far. The other Sunday match in the Bank of Scotland Premier League, Dundee nil, Dunfermline nil. We'll keep you up to date with the scoreline there. As well as keeping tabs on the action here, and there's been plenty of it. Reardon prods the ball in. Phil Stamp pops it away. Phil Stamp, who has paid his fine. He was fined £250. That was double to £500. He didn't pay the 500, but he has paid the 250, so there's probably more <laughs> action at the SFA to come for him as well. But uh, he too didn't rate Dougie McDonald too highly in that match at Kilmarnock in May. So will Stamp be rubber stamped by the <laughs> SFA? <or? laughs> I was going to say that was first class there. Thank goodness you didn't. <laughs> Here's Andy Webster. Stamp to Mabry. Now Hartley. A driven pass. And a combination of McCann and Sloan. Couldn't keep it in. And that's well won by Webster. That's great play from Andy Webster. Very, very positive. His confidence will have taken a big lift from the confidence that Bertie Vogts has shown in him. Now Sloan. Created a goal last weekend with the cross not too damaging this time. Matt Doombe was able to clear. I tell you, Rob Bobby Williamson wouldn't be too happy with Alan Orman. He's a flat back four just before Presley played that ball. He steps five, six yards forward, playing slow and onside. I'm pretty certain that's where Bobby's trying to maybe make that point to Orman right at this moment in time. Danny Smith's headed away. He's the main man in the middle of defence for Hibbs with bags of experience behind him. In fact, he made his debut against Hearts for Hibs three years back. It's a late one, and Scott Severin has been booked already. Now, that can be too far away from another yellow card, which would have meant red after 15 minutes. I tell you, it's very lucky, Rob. This is a far more dangerous challenge. It doesn't really make contact, but takes Grant Brenner out of the game, but it's far more dangerous than the, the talk he gave the, the yellow card for initially. That's got to be absolutely crazy from Scott Severin. He may debate the first yellow card, but it's against his name, and uh, might well have been away there. He certainly can't do it, Rob, as you mentioned earlier. You've seen in this last week at Ibrox. He's doing a lot of graft in central midfield, Grant Brebner for him in these early stages. And again, it's Brebner. Good work from him. Ian Murray! That was a chance. Right on the penalty spot. And the effort went wide. It's more than half a chance. It's a good ball in. McManus down this side. Murray coming off the left hand side. Getting between the two Hearts defenders. He's going to try and make full contact on the ball. He hits it with the outside of his left foot. And that's why it takes a spin away to the left hand side. Past the goalkeeper's right hand post. 
It's Ian Murray's 100th league game for Hibs, and he might well have marked it there with this game's opening goal. Scored ten times last season. Makes a massive contribution for Hibs. Just 22, but he's now the club captain. Will he be man of the match, or who do you reckon Sandy will be announcing at the tail end of the game as the top player here at Easter Road? That's the number you have to ring if you want to take part in the competition. That was Smith and Reardon. Chasing is Scott Brown. And a foul given against him. That's a silly challenge. Stephen Presley hasn't gone anywhere. He's under a lot of pressure. He's facing his own goal. He's got to give away at least a throw and maybe a corner kick if Young Brown doesn't foul him. Well, an experience again. Moylan and aims for Wynas, but Danny Smith has things well under control. Now it's Wynas, lovely flick, good turn. Mark de Vries, beaten by Alan Orman. Brebner over the top of Maybury for Reardon. That's good play from Alan Maybury. Very calm, very controlled, and again. I think that's called a double nutmeg in the trade. And goes Presley against Murray. How much do these players want to win? Well, you can tell it in every challenge. So it should be, Rob. If you've got a derby match, you get lots of praise, lots of confidence. minutes played, no goals as yet in the Edinburgh Derby, first of the season. Brown tries to hold off Hartley. A quick throw, seen by Webster, cut out by Webster. And Bernardi, did this. Romantic responsibility, gets the better of Stamp. Reared and shot on target. But not a great problem for Teppy Moylan, but that's better from him. It's a decent effort from Derek Reardon. If you watch the run from Grand Brendan here, he can maybe just have played them in. He's only got one thought, though. Hit the target, try a shot, try and score a goal. Austin McCann powers a header clear. Zambonardi gives it away for Hibbs. Several to Sloan. He loses it. Dumbe. Well won by Scott Brown. Andy Webster cushions the header back to Moylan. He's a big talent, is Andy Webster, both for club and country. And he, of course, scored the winner between these two in the, the Festival Cup a couple of weeks back. And uh, Webster, you would imagine, will play alongside Stephen Presley in Oslo next Wednesday from 6.45, BBC Two, Scotland. Derek Reardon, offside. Lovely bit of skill, good control, and a nice finish, but the flag was already up. The flag was up nice and early, but it's not the worst pass. Zambernardi, that switch of play again. Reardon, if he just holds his run for half a second, I'm pretty certain it would have been onside. Should do not too happy with him. Wasting time. I think after the initial start of the game, Rob, uh, has certainly started better, but Bobby Williamson may well now be the happier manager. We've certainly weathered the storm. Doesn't look too happy, mind you. Never does. <laughs> Dumbe, well. I wonder if he's given a goal kick there. Well, that seems a little bit strange. <laughs> it was, it was Dumbe the head of the by the way, yeah. Didn't seem to be any great protest from Hearts about that, no. but uh, I was waiting for the corner kick. Another mistake from Daniel Anderson with the ball at his feet. He's a lucky man. That's twice the Swedish keeper has tried that one. Foul by Webster and Reardon. Hibs free kick. Hey Rob, I'm looking at the Hibs strike as we said that Brown, Reardon 
they have to be nuisances today, put themselves about. And they're certainly doing that, that man there at the other end. How lucky does he feel? Two in a row. Smith's free kick. Headed down by Brown. This! It's another glorious opportunity for him. It's first money, now Viz, both off target. Jakob Viz can't believe this. It's good play again from him, first of the ball inside the hats box. It just takes a touch off the outside of the post. Six inches the other way, that's a goal. So within a fraction of an inch of the opening goal from Jakob Viz. I don't think Moylan would have stopped that. As it was, it clipped the outside of the post. Rebner to rear them. That's good, strong play by Alan Maybury. He used his body well. And here he is again. Dumbe won the header. Hartley looking for De Vries. Then Bernardi launches it for Scott Brown. That's good defending from Andy Webster. He looked untroubled with the ball in the air. He just kept his eyes on it. That's a fine rob with a high ball near us. When it goes in behind them, that's when they have a problem with the quick strikers. Zambernardi again for Reardon. Wonderful save by Tepi Moylanen. Great save from the goalkeeper. Good move again from Hibsdor down the left-hand side. It's a slip there more than anything else, but Reardon is onside. That's the right place to put it, across the goalkeeper, in for the far post. He may get a rebound, and it's very unfortunate the ball falls to Andy Webster when it comes back out the way. He scored last week, then it reared in against Dundee United, and they nearly made it 2-2. Two and two. It was a good effort, well struck, and that's a top save from the big Finn. Ian Murray tried to guide that in at the near post. It was a clever attempt. That's good awareness again from him, just a corner kick. Reardon sees Murray free in the edge of the box, and how many times did we see that type of shot sneaking in at the post? In goes Dennis Wynas against Gary Smith. Hearts throw. Haven't seen too much of Dennis Wynas, Rob. I'll take him time to sell to the, the pace of the Premier League, especially a derby match. McCann. Severin. Lofted up for Mark De Vries. Daniel Anderson punches it when it looked as if he could have caught it. But it's been a nervous start to his first Edinburgh derby for the Hibs keeper. Derek Reardon looks for a free kick and gets it. He was caught by the trailing leg of Andy Webster when Reardon looked to be heading for the byline. It's the same tactic again from Hibs. It was uh, Zambernardi played that long diagonal ball and Reardon there, skipping round Webster, just taking him out of the game a little bit. But young Reardon's relaxed, tell you that. He's playing very, very well. Manus with the free kick, Stop missed it, and Zambernardi had another chance for Hibs. He doesn't expect to get there, so Alan Mabry lets him go, thinking Stamp's getting there, but the ball comes right to the forehead of Zambernardi. If he opens his eyes, if he thinks he's going to get this, and it's on target, it's got to be a goal. Big mix-up between Stamp and Mabry. All sorts of accusing glances in that Hearts goal mouth, but it was Phil Stamp who went for it and didn't get near it. But no, but I also think you look at Mabry Rob, he's picking up Zambernardi and he lets him go, you can't do that. That's well read by Eric Zambernardi, gets in front of Hartley. Now Brevner with McManus wide. Brown reared in, in the middle. That's a free kick against Austin McCann. And of course, there's a little bit of recent history between McCann and McManus because they were wrestling on the ground a couple of weeks back <laughs> in the Festival Cup. Sandy, you watched it. I watched that. I witnessed that one, Rob. Yep. There was no love lost that day. It was definitely be the same again today. But good player from McManus. Willing to take on the fullback. Five in the box for Hibs. Three just outside. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant referee's in the road. Reardon with the free kick. It's spun off Webster's head to Zambernardi. Couldn't get his shot in. And Dennis Wynas gave it away. 
Dembe looking to link up again with Reardon, but uh, Derek Reardon was making a point to the assistant referee that I can't take the free kick if you're in my run-up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the assistant was trying to stay in line to look along the line for an offside, but you really can't get the player's road without being called an obstruction. <laughs> Well, we've heard all about Bobby Williamson's ranting and ravings in the technical <laughs> area early on. What about Craig Levinchuk? He's having a major debate with his midfielder at the moment. Scott Seven and Phil Stamp, I think there's a little mix-up in there, trying to sort it out. Peter Houston's been engaged in conversation with him as the match rages on. Here's Stamp the ball now, Rob. Free kick against Alan Orman. And it's going to be a yellow card for Orman as well. That's going to be for kicking the ball there, Rob. Certainly can't be for the free kick. There wasn't an awful lot in this. You watch it here, Stamp's going beyond them. He just across his shoulder, it's almost a shoulder challenge. But it's here, it's when he kicks the ball away. That's, when, that's why you get the yellow card. Yeah, if it had been what happened next on Question of Sport, <laughs> I think we'd have said, well, he kicked the ball away, and that's why he was good. I would have got that one, right? In the 28th minute at Easter Roads, Sloan's free kick, Orman's header. Alan Mabry, good shot! Cornel Anderson got a touch to it, it's a corner kick, it was going wide, but the goalkeeper wasn't too sure. This is a good shot from Mabry, first of the ball as it comes out, connects fairly well with it. This is slice of touches of any from, from Anderson, assistant on this side given the, the corner kick, you see it here, I don't think he touched it. No. It's Hart's first corner kick of the match, amazingly enough. I think it maybe just took a little bit of nail varnish off on its way through, maybe. <laughs> the in-swinging corner from Robert Sloan. Well, free kick is given against Hearts, but I'm not totally convinced by Daniel Anderson, I have to say, so far. No, it looks very nervy, Rob. Uh, the ball in there again, goalkeepers. You like to see them come and catch the ball. Anderson prefers to, to punch. His kicking hasn't been great, but hasn't lost any goals. That's the important factor. Rangers Kilmarnock last week, Hibs Hearts this week, and Partick Thistle Celtic next week. It's a Saturday lunchtime, 12.30 kick-off, we don't hear from 10 past 12. Can Thistle do what they did early on last season against Celtic and run them pretty close? It took a Henrik Larsson goal, just the one to beat Thistle at Fur Hill in the corresponding game last season. Sam Bernardi using the long ball again. Scott Brown has it. Good turn, really stretching Sloan, still has it Brown, good run. Austin McCann finally does the defending. That's good play though from Young Brown, wanting to have a go, I love that, confidence. Good ability there, could maybe have passed it there to Alan Norman, tries a difficult one, just one too many. A lot of young strikers for Bobby Williamson to pick from at the moment. Not much experience, but in addition to the two up front, he's got O'Connor and Dobby are on the bench, and of course McManus, who's playing on the, the right side of midfield here today. The likes of uh, Brewster and Patalainen, who've been here in recent seasons, have gone. And youth gets his chance. Here's Wynas. Snaps for the shot, and he's still to settle. He certainly has, and uh, you mentioned the young hip strikers, Rob. Uh, Reardon and Brown are both playing very well today. They're having a, an influence in the game, whereas if you look at Mark DeFries and that man there, Dennis Wynas, they really haven't got too involved so far. I just wonder how fit DeFries is. McCann's header. Mark De Vries loses out to Matt Doombe. Paul Hartley taking route one. And uh, that's cool goalkeeping <laughs> from Daniel Anderson. I'm not sure if it was deliberate though. You might try those in training, but uh fancy trying that in the Edinburgh Derby. Another rampaging run from Scott Brown. The 18 year old has just turned 18. Mabry mops it up. Wyner skips away from this and from Bredner. Now, young Robert Sloan. Wyner again. Not, not 
quite happening for Dennis Wyness so far, taking the wrong decisions. And alongside him, well, I'm not totally sure how fit Mark de Vries is. No, he certainly hasn't made too much of an influence so far. Let's find out from Chick what, what Craig Levine reckons to the, the, the sharpness and the fitness of his main striker. Yeah, Mark de Vries is having a, having a go, both Peter Houston and Craig Levine, turning him to get more involved up the work a little bit, knocking himself into the game. And he's taking a bit of an earful from the management team here. Matt, Matt Craig Levine out again having a go, turn to work, uh, work up the, the work rate a little bit and get himself into this match. That's, uh, that's basically what he's saying there, Rob, without the one or two adjectives, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave those out if you could. It is Sunday afternoon. But uh, Mark de Vries playing with a heavy scrapping, as you can see on his left thigh. He was thought a groin strain might keep him out of this match. He said he was fit to play. Obviously, he would want to play, but uh, his contribution has been minimal so far. Well, I was speaking to Peter Houston before the game, Rob. It's, he said that Mark said he was fit. It's not actually like groin, it's a top his thigh, high up his oh, thigh. Sorry. That's <laughs> I'll keep you right. And that's why it's strapped up today. Scrapping for possession. Tom McManus and uh, a whole string of Hearts players. Paul Hartley got involved, and McManus wags his finger in Hartley's face. It's all getting a little bit overheated. I don't see the need for Tom McManus to get involved here, Rob. It's a challenge for the ball. The ball's there to be one, two or three, four, five players all going for the ball. Paul Hartley, for some reason, gets a bad stick. That's accidental. He's maybe standing on McManus, but no intent. Here's De Vries. He's won a corner. Off all man. Here's the man of the match, number again. 1901, 110861. The calls cost 25 pence. Sloan's cross, stamps header. Alan Orman was doing the tight marking job in the box. That's good defending from Hudson the set piece. The festival puck game a fortnight ago, the lost the only goal of the game. It's a Hearts corner kick. I'm sure Bobby's made his team well aware of that, the danger at set pieces. McCann's header. De Vries with an awkward one to control. Did well, and wins a free kick. He's so strong, Mark De Vries. He just can't get the ball off him. He's such a big lad that's hard to get around him. And Paul Hartley, who was playing wide right at the start, seems to now be tucked in behind the strikers. Sandy. Well, Paul can play different positions doing that right-hand side, in one wide. He's very effective in both positions. Must have heard me, he's gone wide right again. <laughs> Alan Mabry on the move, and Ian Murray snuffs out the trouble. Mabry, who played 15 times for Leeds when George Graham was the manager there. Champions League experience as well. Still only 25. Mabry's cross. Debris with a good touch. Great turn, it's De Vries, and it's a good save from Anderson. Magnificent play from Mark De Vries. For a big lad, such great control. You see the shot here, good save. And then at the other end of the pitch, Scott Brown's latest run is halted by Andy Webster. Yellow card for the Scotland defender. Can't complain there, Webster. Scott Brown's causing so many problems to Webster and Presley. Just be commanding them, having a go at them. So two bookings each. Orman and Dumbe for Hibbs. Webster and Severin for Hearts. I think Derek Reardon's trying to come to some arrangement with the assistant, <laughs> whereby he doesn't stand in front of him. Mind you, I thought that was a free kick, but it's a throw. Reardon thought so too. Oman, stopped by Wynas. McCann to Sloan, and Paul Hartley sprinting through the middle. That's another yellow. It's a red card! Grant Brebner sent off! Ten minutes before half-time, Hibbs down to ten men. I can't really understand that, role. It looks a yellow card, certainly. Sloan's going forward, does the right thing, cuts across him. But that's really, it, it, it's a body contact as much as anything else. He's not trying to sweep at him. He's not trying to take him out of the game completely. 
For me, oh. a yellow card may have been sufficient there. Well, let's find out what's happening from Chick in the technical area because all the players are there at the moment. Well, as you might imagine, Bobby Williamson's absolutely raging down here. He's trying to organise the team. There's chaos down here. Scott Seven put his hands up and said uh, he didn't think there was much in it. Bobby Williamson's absolutely raging. Dougie McDonald's down here trying to calm things out. You can see there the anger of the Hibs manager, really furious. Dougie McDonald's been at Bobby Williamson throughout this first half, and he really will have to watch himself, but there's no doubt that Hibs are outraged by that order and off down here. Yeah. And Chick, interestingly, the assistant on the far side of the pitch there, Stuart McCauley, is uh, scribbling in his book, so obviously... Something's, yeah. something's been said over there, well, and uh, one can only imagine, well, you probably know what it is. <laughs> there was a lot uh, of anger shown after that. There was, there was two camps, the Hearts players gathered around Craig Levine. Craig Levine shrugged his shoulders. I don't think he thought it was an opening up no. either. And Grant Bremner's face, as he went up the top, just told this story. But Bobby Williams is absolutely furious, and he's still being talked to by the fourth official, Dougie McDonald, who's so made the headlines with Craig Levine. I tell you, Rob, I think that could be Sorry. under pressure there. Sorry, Rob. The only thing it could be is Stuart Dougal maybe seen it as a goal scoring opportunity. Hartley was getting three through the middle. Well, I think it's worth another look. Let's. When the ball goes dead again, we'll have another look at that to see if that could possibly be an interpretation. Because otherwise, it looked like a yellow card at worst. And a red card seems like a massive overreaction from Stuart Dougal. But let's have another look. Now you see it here, Sloan, he's on his bike, he's gone, he does well here, cutting across the front of Brenda, enticing the challenge. But really, he's there's no way he's that's a direct red card. Sure, Dougal, no hesitation, Rob. He's, only a, he's only a few yards inside the opposition half. It's, if you see it from a different angle, Paul Hart has made a great run through the middle. Gary Smith certainly matching him. And I can't think of any other reason other than the fact that he may have seen it as a goal-scoring chance. Well, one thing you can simply assume, Bobby Williamson is raging. Uh, Grant Brebner's in the dressing room, and Hibbs down to 10 men. 11 against 10 for Hearts at Easter Road, still goalless. But uh, you really didn't expect a calm, quiet Sunday afternoon, did you? In the 39th minute, with Phil Stamp. Launches it for Paul Hartley and Anderson has to come and play sweeper. It's a better kick from the goalkeeper. I'll tell you what, Rob, there's a few players out there will have to be very, very careful. The guys on yellow cards at this moment in time will have to be very careful with any challenges they make. That's a goal kick. And one can only imagine what's going through Grant Brebner's head at the moment inside the dressing room. I mean, he's born in Dunderhall, he's hibs daft, he really wants to be part of this. But uh, Stuart Dougal decided that his offence against Sloan was enough to show him a red card. I'm sure Stuart Dougal will explain these decisions at half-time, Rob, or maybe at the end of the game. Clear up the controversy, perhaps. So the possession just about even Stevens. Hibbs have gone closest to scoring with that effort from Viss, which clipped the outside of the post. But uh, 40 minutes gone, still goalless. Dumbe with the free kick. Andy Webster won the header. Mark the Greece chests it down for Sloan. Can't let that go with uh, Tom, Tom McManus breathing down his neck. <laughs> you mentioned the game, Rob, for the few yellow cards, a red card, one or two chances. The only real thing that's missing in this match is a goal. Great commitment from both teams. Pretty impressed with Robert Sloan so far for Hearts down the left side. Sandy, it was he who obviously enticed Grant Brebner into that challenge. 
He's pretty positive and uh, he's got a bit of dig about him. He has, over. I'm, actually, I'm absolutely delighted that Craig Levine decided to play him today. It's a big match, it's a derby match, and it's easy to take the easy option. Don't play a young player. But why do that? Let him play, give, let his confidence grow, let him de develop into a first-team player by playing these type of games. And I think Craig deserves, deserves enormous credit for, for him being in the starting 11. He was at St Mirren as a schoolboy. Robert Sloan made his first-team debut with Hearts AJ team. And he'll benefit from the experience gained here. That's a Hearts free kick. Phil Stamp in a hurry. But uh, the ball was on the move. They'll have to come back. I think the Red Cars actually took this thing out of the game, Rob. It certainly settled down just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think as Chick can probably confirm to us, it's a lot calmer on the pitch at the moment than it is in the technical area. I think tempers have been cooled a little bit, uh, settled down for the moment. The game has slowed down to about 180 mile an hour, but Bobby Williamson seems to have settled down. Phil Stamp dragged his efforts wide. He remembers this ground well and this fixture well because he was the, the match winner here last November with that uh, late goal and then, of course, a red card to follow it. <laughs> That's right, That's a chance to rob. Paul Hartley's made a great run down the right hand side. Stamp couldn't make up his mind whether to have the shot or play Hartley in. He really didn't make his mind up, and that's why he pulled it so wide. Severance throw for Wynas. Gary Smith doing the defending. Mark de Vries looking for a free kick against Jakovic, not given. Now on the counter attack, Zambardi was asking a lot of Scott Brown. Well, I was handed straight to McManus by Webster. Not sure what he was trying to do there. Thankfully for him, McManus was surprised. I'm just look at the, the Hibs line-up, Rob. Bean Murray's pushed into to central midfield, leaving a big gap down the, the, the Hibs left-hand side defensively. Tom McManus has changed me the young Brown. There will be two minutes added to the two minutes remaining in the first half. Nobody caught by Murray, free kick. I don't think Ian Murray can have any complaint about that. No, he can't, uh, but Ian Murray's going to have a hard shift down that side, Rob. He's got to try and play in one beside this to cover up for Brenner's absence and also get back out to help Zambanardi. Hearts looking to maximise on their numerical advantage. Well, he intercepted maybe his pass. Good play from Dennis Wynas. And Zambanardi clears. Inside the 45th minute. And it's been quite a first half at Easter Road. No goals, but straight everything else, including four yellow cards and one red. Hips down to ten men. That's a good turn from Phil Stamp. Paul Hartley. Offside. Scott Severin. Scott Severin, yeah. I think Mark DeVries is also offside. Good play from the Hibs back four. Holding a good line there, leaving four Hearts players offside at the one time. Good defending. That's what you teach them to do, isn't it, Sandy? Come out That's, as a unit. Yep, Bobby does that so well. The success Bob Williams had at Kilmarnock was, was based on his back four working so well as a defensive unit. Happy chappy, he's oh, not. He's... Those glasses are steamed up, I Presley cools things down with the header to Maybury. Maybury was fouled by uh, McManus. And Tom McManus will add to the crime count. He picks up too many cards, Tom McManus, for his own good, because eventually that's going to mean suspension, and he's going to lose his place. No, that's a silly one, it's a tug. As soon as you pull a jersey, Rob, the referee can, he can, he can give a yellow card then without any question. It's not because of the foul, he pulls them back, he tugs them, and that's why it's an automatic yellow card. In that area of the pitch, crazy. Crazy. Tom McManus in the Scotland Under-21 squad. He's a player full of talent. If it can be harnessed, 
Zamanardi rolls it down the line, but Scott Brown gives up the chase early on. That's not what he wanted it played. And the Frenchman is told, in no uncertain terms, that uh, that wasn't the service that the teenage striker was looking for. No, it wasn't. Zambanard, the early part of the game, Rob, was playing lots of diagonal balls, left back to inside right position. Dundee nil, Dunfermline one at Dens Park, a Lee Wilkie own goal. He's not exactly a stranger to putting the ball in his own net, Lee Wilkie. He's done it again. Dunfermline ahead at Dens. No free kick for Dennis Wynas. First half almost finished. 15 seconds left, by my reckoning. Sorry, Rob, I think both uh, managers will want to get their players in now at half-time. Hibbs will have to make sure they're organised second half. And Craig Levine will have to make sure Hart's trying to get lots of win. Use the man advantage. Bobby Williamson is still raging. He'll take a long time to cool down. He has a feeling of injustice. His anger is directed at Stuart Dougal. Gary Smith having a word in the referee's ear because Hibbs are not happy about the referee's decision, which has left them with ten men on the pitch. Grant Brebner sent off ten minutes from half-time for a foul and a, and a fan on the pitch running towards the referee shades of Petrodri yesterday and what happened there when a, when a fan ran towards Fernando Rickson Stuart Dougal had to get out of the way very quickly there before that supporter caught up with them there will be yet another inquiry about stewarding and security Let's hear from the heart assistant manager, Peter Houston. Peter, that was a, a quiet first 45 minutes, was it not? Intense. I thought uh, possibly the, the sending off was a wee bit harsh, to be honest. I think the referee made a few bookings early, but I think I know it's a derby match, no tackles are going to be flying in, but I thought it was a wee bit harsh. The bottom line is you've got the extra man. Do you change things tactically now? I mean, you obviously adjusted a little bit. I'm disappointed the way we've played in the first half. I don't think we've created enough, and probably the best two chances have felt to Hibs. Where Tepe's had a good save and they've hit the post, but the Vries has had a chance for Hearts, but we'll need to create more. But we've seen a lot, you know, play with 10 men. It's not always playing against 10 men, it's not, not always the easiest thing. No, they get behind the ball and they'll make it difficult for us, but I'm only concentrating on what Hearts are going to do, and I think we've got to get the ball wide and get better delivery into the box. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. One idiot at Petodre yesterday, another one today at Easter Road. What on earth is going on? Uh, they may plead provocation. Nothing is, uh, justifies that sort of behaviour. A first half without goals, but virtually everything else. Bobby Williamson losing the heed, as they say, and I think understandably, Gordon, I thought it was a poor decision. Yeah, I don't think it was a correct decision. I think that uh, the referee did try and nail things early on, but I thought he was a, a little bit harsh with the decisions. And you know, now they're down to 10 men, it's obviously going to be difficult for Hibs. I thought they were the better team in the first half. I don't think Hearts really got going. And I think that's what's annoyed Bobby more than anything. An opportunity to go in and win the game. He's seen his team play well. I know it's still sitting at 0-0, but I'm sure he felt that if they kept it 11 players, that they would have gone on to win the game, and that's why he'll be so upset. Yeah, Hibs were actually very good in that first half. They had a lot of nice football and had some real chances, Stuart, didn't they? They did, yeah. They moved the ball around really well. Um, they had a lot of joy with Zambonardi switches of play. Um, they certainly played the, the more intricate football, and I, I think Peter Houston was right that the best chances fell to Hibs, and they really haven't looked uh, any threat at all, hearts up front. Um, we don't want to spend an awful lot of time talking about a referee's performance, but we're probably going to end up talking the whole half-time uh, about it because yeah. um, he's, he, I think he set his stall out early in the game to, with some soft bookings, um, and I think that if Stuart Dougal looks back on this game, I'm sure he'll have to review the sending off because it really looked a, a very poor decision. It did. Yeah, always difficult for a referee. Of course, derby match, he wants to clamp down early, not let anything get out of hand, but then he's made a rod for his own back in some ways. We'll look at those incidents shortly, but uh, let's head for Dens and uh, a late goal in uh, the first half there. Jim Spencer, give us the details. 
Yeah, and all sides of smashing grab here, Dougie. It's 1-0 to Dunfermline, literally on the stroke of half-time. Big Lee Wilkie sticking out a leg for a harmless-looking ball into the box and staring it past Julian Speroni from about five or six yards. Dundee stunned to go in up the tunnel at one down at half-time here. And Dundee's brush strokes had been a thing of beauty, painting a beautiful canvas. Namzadzi, the artist in residence, splaying the ball about and spreading some wonderful passes. Chief artist in residence, as I say. They had some great efforts on goal. Barry Smith going wide after 15 minutes. Steve Lovell, four minutes later, uh, with a good effort. And then in 33 minutes, Brent Sancho firing one, which took a deflection and passed the post. And just before Dunfermline scored, uh, Nacho Novo chesting one down, firing in, almost slipping under Stilly, but he managed to retrieve the ball. Interesting postscript here. The Daily Record uh, have been banned from this game. Uh, the new director and the current Dundee director is very unhappy at certain things in that big selling newspaper. So there's an intriguing thing which I'm sure will uh, incur uh, some comments after the game. Half time though at Dens, Dundee nil, uh, Dunfermline won. Thanks, Jim. Yes, as we said at the start of the programme, only a week into the season and there's talking points and controversy everywhere. Don't forget highlights of that uh, Hibs Hearts uh, first half coming up for you, but uh, still one more match to come from yesterday, of course, and that was Livingston's first home game of the season against Motherwell. Dougie Vipon went behind the scenes at Ammonville to see how the new boss, Marcio Massimo, is settling in. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, hi. The first yeah, Brazilian hi, coach to take over at the British club seems a popular figure at Livingston so far. For the opening home fixture, there were handshakes all round. Assistance at Almond Vale comes from the handy Alan Preston. <laughs> My, my, my right hand, my right to arms, my left to arms, you understand? Everything, almost. <laughs> oh, no, everything, everything problem. So it's great to be on you, but I never else. Yes, right, yeah. But then we talk about, yes, what you do, understand? Just to confusion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be running all over yeah, the place. Yes, yes. <laughs> in my opinion, no don't have a different football in the world. Just to have different characters. In football, especially in Scotland, it's very strong marketing, very, very physical game. But basically, it's the same thing than another, another good level. I'm very glad that you brought the Brazilian sunshine with you. Yeah, yes, I think so. I would like being Brazilian results as well. <laughs> <laughs> The reception might have been warm for the new boss, but the game itself took half an hour to warm up. A lovely move and a fine cross from David McNamee almost led to the opener, but Barry Wilson, then Lee Makel, were unable to find the back of the net. Now, you're going to hear the name Fernando Pasquinelli quite a lot in the next few minutes because almost every move that caused consternation in the Motherwell defence involved him. In the 33rd minute, his leisurely run earned a free kick but Barry Wilson's low swerving drive was just wide. And it was a free kick that brought out the closest thing to a save from Alan Main all afternoon. Marvin Andrews' strong arm tactics ruled a little too strong by referee Craig Thompson in his first Premier League match. Motherwell's Stephen Hamill stepped up to the plate, but this strike was caught behind. A great effort from the ever-present Hamill, but just a few inches too high. And as the first half was petering out, Gordon Marshall pulled off a fine save from John Paul McGovern to keep the honours even at the interval. The veteran keeper started playing football before many of his teammates were even born, but he showed there's life in the old dog yet. Remember that man Pasquinelli I was talking about? Well, two and a half minutes into the second half, his solo effort was only parried by Marshall. Barry Wilson, though, wasn't able to capitalise. Wilson reckoned it was a corner. He might just have a point. I suppose the mark of a good manager is knowing when to make a change. In the 70th minute, John Paul McGovern was sacrificed for Derek Lilly. Eight minutes later, the former Dundee United striker made the difference. And just who do you think provided the cross?
fantastic work from Pasconelli, drawing three defenders wide. Lily's finish, equally fantastic. Maximum points for Marcio, and he's happy in his new home. Totally very good people as well. Welcome. Today I, I saw a Brazilian flag in stand. I, I very emotion, you understand, because that's everything all right. Enjoy your time here in Scotland. Thanks a lot, I will. Yeah, so they continue to pick up points where they are. He certainly will. And good start to the season for you, Stuart. Yeah, not too bad. Four points from six. That's, uh, that's a good effort. And um, I think we just about shaded it yesterday. Had, had probably the, the better of the chances, but it wasn't a great game by any means. Yeah, and your own position in the obviously still causing you some problems. But how yeah, are you? I'm, I'm probably uh, looking at weeks rather than months. So I'm, I'm fairly hopeful I'll be back before too long. Good. We wish you well. Uh, three matches in the, the Barclays Premiership this afternoon. Let's just bring you up to date with those. Uh, Channelton 0, Manchester City 3 now. And uh, Leeds United 2, Newcastle 2 is confirmed as a result. Uh, Liverpool and Chelsea kicking off in about five minutes or so from now. Now back to that eventful first 45 minutes at Easter Road. It's goalless, but it's been lots of incident. And Hibbs, of course, reduced to 10 men with the sending off of Grant Brebner. Early on, though, it was Zam Bernardi with uh, some lovely diagonal balls. It was really causing Hearts a lot of problems, Gordon. Yeah, he, I thought uh, this was a, a tactic that worked well in, in the early part of the game. Zam Bernardi started well, but, you know, great uh, use of the diagonal ball. He was sending balls right into that area and behind the, you know, the Hearts trying to pick out behind their back four. And they're working really well. You can see how it's obviously something they have worked on there. Zamanadi just drives forward and then just lifts lovely little balls into that area. And, and as I say, at that, at that stage of the game, that was a real threat. That's what very much second best at this stage, actually, Stuart, weren't they? Yeah, I think that um, Gordon touched on this. I mean, it, it was frightening how many times it worked. I think uh, that was a very close offside decision, but it must have been four or five pinpoint passes. And, and I mean, with the exception of uh, Anderson's kicking, uh, Hearts really didn't uh, trouble Hibbs at all in the first half. This was another great uh, switch of play. Hibbs played some nice football. They kept it on the ground. They kept moving it around, and the two strikers, Reardon and uh, mm. Brown, really worked well together. I thought they were they were a, a real threat. Yeah, they were no doubt. Uh, Reardon in particular had more chances than Brown, perhaps, but they do work well together. And uh, Hibbs actually unlucky not to be ahead at half time. I said it'd be a great test to see how the youngsters of Hibbs did against what is effectively Scotland's two centre backs just now. But they did create a few openings, ball in there, and, and Murray. I mean, I, I thought it was unlucky to an extent because it was a difficult one to take. Half volley, ball coming across. He, he is left footed, and it's, he's always having to let it come past his. He's standing foot there, but uh, but they had some efforts. That was a good one. Fist there, getting in, cracked it uh, off the post. And at that stage of the game, I, I thought Hibbs were definitely on top. This was a good ball again. It, he slipped over that at that stage, but into Reardon. And Reardon was really busy in that early part of the game. The ball just didn't fall either for Brown when it came back off the keeper. Probably has to be considered a good save by Moylanen. Brown again, and uh, yes, that was a, this was a good chance, actually. And... Uh, Good save by the keeper. Got to give Mullen and credit for that. But you see, all, all the chances are at the same end, aren't they? I mean, mm. I think that um, this is why it makes it such a controversial sending off because Hibbs have, have definitely bossed the game. And I think that down to 10 men, Bobby's going to have to completely reshuffle their, their formation. They're maybe going to have to go with just one up front and, and one in behind. And, and uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're probably going to be looking at a draw as being a good result now, where, whereas beforehand they were actually thinking they would go on and win the game. Yeah, it was a, well, there were some strange decisions. Stuart Dougal did make a rod for his own back early, Gordon, in a sense, with a, a booking of Scott Severin, which frankly didn't seem justified. Well, did it? I actually think Stuart Dougal's a good ref referee, and, and you know, at the times you can only judge him, you're not saying they're a bad referee, but I thought he made some mistakes. It's a derby game, and you know, it's, it's going to be hard fought, and there's going to be a lot of tension involved. and when you know there's going to be hard tackles going in, that's not the sort of thing you should be giving a yellow card out for this early, you know what I mean? And then, and then you know, just after that, Scott Seven had that tackle and didn't get booked yeah. because he'd already given him. Now, that could have been, that could have been a yellow card. Then maybe that was a booking. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, the Hibs fans would be terrible to say that should have been a booking and, and Scott Seven having been booked already. Look, you know, that walks away, that's him walking now, he's off with a red. So... I think that's why there'll be, you know, there'll be a lot of controversy after this game. This was really harsh as well, I thought. There's nothing in that, Stuart, surely. Well, I think that when you see it at full pace and you realise how, how quickly the guy's running, he, uh, Sloan did very well because he cut across Grant, Grant Brebner. If you see it on the slow-mo, it actually does look like Grant has maybe deliberately tried to impede him. But even so, he's on the halfway line. Mm. I cannot see how it can possibly be a red card. It's, it's not, uh, it's not a, a tackle with uh, any great malice. 
it's not designed to hurt a player. Um, maybe he's trying to obviously halt the play. It's what we might call in professional football as a good foul because he, mm. he, he slows the play down. But um, for, for Stuart Dougal to give him a red card there, we, we, you know, we want to see um, talking points at the end of the game about goal mouth chances and things like that and, and, and not decisions by the referee that can alter the, mm. the, the shape of the match. And Bobby Williamson's reaction, understandable that he seemed to be almost getting himself into trouble with the, the stand side linesman and the fourth official, Dougie McDonald, as well. But uh, when he sees something like that in a game that Hibs are dominating, it's totally understandable. Understandable, isn't it? Yeah, mm. I think I think that the fact is that's why Bobby will be so upset. Mm. I mean, you, you could consider. I mean, there's no doubt about it that if you look at it, uh, Stuart Dougal on the day has has been a weak link in this game, and there's no mm. doubt. But as we all know, Dougie, if we watched television last night, he, uh, he was not, wasn't the weakest link. We know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered when I was going to get It's time to reveal who you think is the weakest link. Dougie. Dougie. Jeff. So, Doogie, you're the sort of Gary Lineker of Scotland, aren't you? Oh, I couldn't possibly put myself on that pedestal, no. No, but your ears are nearly as big, aren't they? <laughs> There's a certain resemblance to the Scottish Cup there, yeah. Statistically, he was the worst player. Doogie, you are the weak sleep. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my ears. Never did like that, Steve Ryder. Nothing each at Easter Road. Let's uh, head back there for what should be a very interesting second half. Robin Sandy. I'm not sure if it was the reflection of the background in the sports scene studio or was that the very red face <laughs> that he Donnelly had there. Um, surprise, surprise. Sure, Dougal re-emerges when probably what he really feels like doing is climbing in his car and going home. <laughs> Uh, because uh, however wrong his decision was to send off Grant Brebner, uh, no one deserves that sort of treatment from the fan. Let's hear from Jerry McCabe. J Jerry, very quickly, that was a, a, a we felt a, a cruel decision, that ordering off. Oh, check, honestly, I've got no comment. The way I feel about it, but well, as I say, the better. Well, at the moment, it's a tactical rethink for Hibs, isn't it? Well, right now, you know, what I mean, we can't fault anything. The boys are first half. They've just got to go, you know, big leap deep in the second half. And, We'll see how the game goes. And, and calm the anger and redirect it into something positive? Oh, hopefully, yeah, no, it's concentrating the game, that's what it's all about. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, sir. The Edinburgh Derby made headlines last season. Mark De Vries with four goals in the first one, Phil Stamp with a late winner in the second, and then uh, Graham Weir's two late goals to square the third derby at uh, four all. This one will make headlines as well. Uh, we'll make headlines because of uh, the red card shown to Grant Brebner and also for that attack on the referee by that uh, crazy fan at the end of the first half. So, just refreshing your mind on the Hibs lineup, only ten names there, with Brebner sent off in the first half. Hearts have made one change with uh, Robert Sloan going off, replaced by Stephen Boyack. Just look at the, the hats change off. Paul Harder looks as if he's going to play left hand side. And Boyack, who's very confident, comfortable doing that right hand side. A good footballer. I'm sure Craig's going to try and get a little bit of width, try and stretch the, the Hibs defence with a man short. Zambernardi's cross, and an easy take for Tepi Moylan. So, why the change, Sandy? Why Boyack? Well, young Robert Sloan didn't do too badly. Obviously, had a great little run down that left hand side, committing Grant Brenner there. Like it or not, he's now got a, a red card. Maybe not enough contribution from Craig's point of view. Looking a little bit more to the experienced boy. Out. Liberty, and it's covering across Gary Smith. And Chick, if you're hoping for a quiet afternoon uh, where your contribution is limited, this is not the place to be, really, is it? No, I wish I'd stayed in Glasgow, but it's always calm and sensible in these <laughs> derby matches. But, uh, you know, in all that instance before half time, I think the bizarre situation, Rob, is that I believe that the, the guy who did invade the park as a carer for a, a disabled person who's now been left at the ground and struggling to get up the road. There is a kind of black humour involved in that. But uh, Hibs will hope to get a statement um, before the game is out from uh, Rod Patriot about the invasion of the park, and they're talking to the police at the moment. Yeah, that's not what Rod Petrie wanted to see, that's for sure, that's what nobody wanted to see. A fan attacking, or heading for Fernando Rickson at Petodre yesterday, and uh, a supporter getting pretty close, dangerously close, to Stuart Dougal. 
as the referee went in at half time here at Easter Road. So, serious issues to address. It's a shame we can't just speak about the football. <laughs> we'll get back to the football now, Rob. That was Dumbay's header, flicked away by Murray and thumped clear by Scott Brown. Back it comes from Presley. Some room for Dennis Wynas. And Dumbay encourages Daniel Anderson to come and take. Wonder how much longer Andy Kirk will be kept in reserve, Sandy. Well, we, we spoke about Young Sloan going off at half time. Dennis Wyness has still got to settle into the, the place of the Premier League as well. Andy Kirk's a proven goal scorer at this level. If you've been uh, entering our Man of the Match competition, can I uh, say that there's been a technical problem? A technical hitch and. Uh, We'll be unable to run the competition today, unfortunately, for that reason. So if you have taken part, apologies. Good play from Scott Severn here. This nicks the ball before Doombe. Doombe accidentally taking them out. And that's why that's on a free kick. Um, and the obvious question in the technical area is, can Chick keep the champagne? Well, knows the answer. There will still be a man of the match, it's just we can't run the competition. For technical reasons. The ice pack has been applied to Bobby Williamson at half-time, hopefully, to try to calm him down, but there'll be no calming him down after the decision to red card Grant Redner. No, you're right, Rob, and it's, uh, it's frustration as much as anything else. It's a situation there that's completely out, out of uh, control, out of the hands of any of the, the coaches' managers. And it's the managers that, that take the pressure, pay the price if things don't go well. And it's annoying to say the least when that type of thing happens to you. And Stephen Boyack to win the header. Gary Smith clears. That's Webster. Ball taking the fiddle, bruising. Now Scott Severin. To Dennis Wynas. And that's not the ball Phil Stamp wanted. Didn't give uh, Stamp a chance here at all. Too much pace in the ball. Wynas had more time than they realised. Looks very nervous, Dennis Wynas, well, Understandable, Rob. He hasn't played at this level for a, a long, long time after his brief spell at Aberdeen. But uh, the one thing about him, Rob, he can stick the ball in the back of the net if you give him half a chance. And I'm a great believer if you can do that in the first division, give him chances in the Premier League, he'll do the same thing. Offside uh, against Derek Reardon. He was on loan at Cowden Beef last season. He played for Keith Wright's team. Scored a hat trick in his second game on loan. And very quickly, Hibbs said, Come back here. <laughs> we need those goals. You can understand why. He's played well today. Reardon and Brown have caused lots of problems. Yeah, they look the part, those two, don't they? And, and it is good to see Hibbs playing two young Scottish strikers. I mean, it. <laughs> It's no great decision for Bobby Williamson to make, it's out of necessity, isn't it? It's all, well, about, it's all about money. It is, and, uh, and Reardon and Brown are certainly have two very good ones. I'm just looking at the way that uh, the Bobby's playing it. McManus is actually playing through the middle beside Reardon, and Brown's playing almost right side midfield. I just wonder why Bobby changed that about, because the, the partnership up front, Brown and Reardon, was the, the pair to have been working. And of course, Tom McManus is the old stager up front now, age 22. <laughs> So let's get on with the football. Who's going to win the first Edinburgh derby of the season? It's delicately poised. Ten players against 11. As uh, Parnock Thistle found out yesterday, sometimes that just brings everyone together and brings out a better performance. The 10 will certainly work hard, especially when it's 0-0. Full no start. Shorts was fizzing, but it fizzed wide. Slicing off the outside of his right boot. It's an effort that Anderson and Goal realised this is going real wide. Just the bend and the ball takes it away from the goal rather than towards the post. We'll keep it well covered. What the effort looking start? I think if, uh, if I was Craig Levine, what you've got to do, Rob, you've got to try and pick up the pace of the game. You've got to pass the ball quicker, make the extra man count, get the ball wide, and try and get some delivery for Linus and the three inside the box. Good shot challenge from Paul Hartley. Craig Levine. Looks the epitome of calmness and control on the touchline. 
That won't last. <laughs> Doesn't look too happy to me. I don't feel uh, as if Hearts have passed the ball as well as they can do today. I think you can have credit for that for working so hard and closing them down. Severance pass to Boyack, the substitute. And Mabry. Well, took his eye off it. A little lapse and the ball trundled out. That's beautiful from Alan Mabry. Just lack of concentration. No excuse for that one. This one, the header. In goes Brown, in goes Murray. In goes Reardon, and in went Phil Stamp. He's given a free kick, yeah. shoot the goal. Hibbs free kick. Phil Stamp not being carded in this match. Ten yellows and one red for him last season. He keeps his foot in the ground, the Robbie. He gets through the ball, makes full contact with the ball. For me, that's not a free kick. Zambernardi's delivery, in went this. Bounces into the hands of Moylan. Fin to fin. But no finish. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd gone quiet. You were thinking something up there. Good jump from Yannick Zambernardi to win the header against Stephen Boyack. Maybe for De Vries. Mark Doombe was doing a fair bit of pushing. Back from Smith to Anderson. Good play between the two half centre backs. Doombe and Smith covered each other, winning the ball. Left by Webster, responding to the shout from Moylanan. Grabs it just inside the area. Tom McManus was breathing down his neck. That's, that's a good decision from the goalkeeper, though. Made his mind up. When you make your mind up, come all the way or don't come at all. Severin to Maybury. Presley. Uh, back with Moylan, and he was a uh, first choice under Davy Moyes at Preston, but lost his place when Craig Brown took over. And at that point, he looked for a move and into Craig Levine. Good defending from Dumbe. Very composed. A young Frenchman. Good ball winning from Jakovic. Money to Brown, Reardon controls it on his head. Next touch wasn't quite so clever, but he's got undoubted ability, Derek Reardon. It's a good break from Habzo. Parko Jakovic wins this ball in the middle of the park. Reardon, he should take another touch here. Snatches at it first time. Really can't do too much with that. Take the ball, hold on to it. Don't make up the defender's mind. Not moving too well, Derek Reardon at the moment. Seems to be hobbling slightly, a look of pain on his face. He's stretching his left leg rope, there's going to be a little bit of cramp. And of course, Hibbs do have Gary O'Connor and Stephen Dobby on the bench for the striking positions. Well, it's certainly sunshine over Leith today. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Hibbs nil, Hearts nil. It used to be the traditional scoreline, but certainly <laughs> not in recent times. Maybe he launches it. The second half hasn't really started, has it? No real football at all, no part on the play to the game. I think Bobby Williams will be the happier manager because of that. We've been the man down. He's got Severin in his last season with Hearts, with no contract offer is forthcoming. I was thought he might be off ski in the summer, but uh, still with the Tancastle team. Offside against Boyack. Scott Severn's been nine years at Hearts, Sandy, and uh, I guess he wants a move, but uh, and Hearts looking for a fee. Well, uh, uh, neither forthcoming so far. Well, that's right, it's a catch-22 between the two of them, Scott. Maybe he wants to try his football somewhere else. Hearts trying to cash in on the, the youth policy for are coming through the system. Presley in command. Miss. Zambernardi, good skill. He's got good ability, the Frenchman. The pass asks a fair bit of Oman. And Austin McCann lets it go.
Moylan and three times capped by the Finnish national side. Offside. It's offside against Dennis Wynas as Hibbs check. Think about Gary O'Connor. Yeah, there's been a little debate with Jim Clark, Jerry McCabe and Bobby Williamson and Bobby's given the nod, pointed to Gary O'Connor and uh, Jim Clark just having a word with him and telling him to come on. Uh, obviously going to go for a little more change of switch up front. Gary O'Connor hit the first team seen at Hibs in a blaze of glory. He's dipped out of it in recent times, but uh, ready to go again. Big strong player. Murray's cross turned away by Webster. Zambernardi. McCann clears. Uh, that one's bouncing on the roof of the stand above us. From Young McCann. He was quite pleased, Craig Levine, that Austin McCann was uh, scrapping with Tom McManus a couple <laughs> of weeks back because it showed that uh, he's losing the no more Mr. Nice Guy. It's going to be the injured Derek Reardon coming off and uh, Gary O'Connor replacing him shortly. We saw that uh, Reardon wasn't moving too well, although he's shifting now, <laughs> probably with the sight of Gary O'Connor <laughs> on the touchline. That's good strong play from Ian Murray. Uh, has a free kick against Stamp. Great determination there from Ian Murray. He's played well second half, working so hard, playing the captain's part. Hibbs will make the change. A good hand for Derek Reardon. Looks a very fine prospect. And his replacement is another 20-year-old, Gary O'Connor. Big and bustling and pacey and scores goals. He's been very inconsistent, Rob. That's his problem, McConnor. He's more than capable, lots of potential. Smith's free kick. Connor was the target. Mark has it. Uh, he was being tugged back, but uh, what about advantage? Should have played on the referee. Boy, I could get away from McManus. Seven. Was caught late by O'Connor as he played the pass away. It's a free kick. Got there as quickly as he could, Gary O'Connor. <laughs> I've been watching Matt DeFree Straub last few minutes. I'm not, really not sure how fit he is. Really hasn't won anything at all today the way he normally does. He was holding that strap in a few minutes ago as well. Scott Brown did well. Randy Webster with the cutout. Strong play from Severin, held off Brown's challenge. Hibbs now thinking about a second change with Stephen Glass getting stripped for action. Boyack's pass couldn't find its way through to Maybury. In fact, the Stephen bit was right, not Glass, but Dobby. Good jump from Matt Doombe to win the header against Mark Navrese. I tell you, Robbie had to get there, Doombe. Dennis Wynas was right in behind Mark the Thief. I think flipped that one on. Boylan and throw to Hartley. That's a good jump. Well timed leap from Yannick Zambernardi again. Here's Severin. Good save, Daniel Anderson. It was an awkward one, it took a bounce in front of the keeper. Good save. Good play from Scott Severn. Has going to sleep just a little bit of the throw in. I'm not sure if that's going to sneak in or not, but the goalkeeper can't take the chance. Good touch. Paul Hartley with the corner kick. Stops in it! Wynas had the chance! And it was a chance. He wouldn't get a better chance, Rob. It's a good corner kick from Paul Hartley. Great little flick. It's a free header. Dennis Wynas just has to hit the target. It's got to go in the net. He's watched it here. Lots of time to pick his spot. But he panics that little bit and knocks it way over the bar. 
He just didn't get off the ground, did he? To get over the header, Sandy, and he was unmarked at the back post. He didn't have to go off the ground, Rob. He's just got to go over the ball, put his forehead on it, knock it down, and then it's a goal. So, Hibbs make another change. McManus off. And Stephen Dobby on. He was six years at Rangers before deciding enough was enough. He's moved on to Hibbs, the 20 year old, and pre season scored two goals against Sunderland. Looks a good finisher. And Hibbs fans hope he can finish here. I think Bobby's substitutions are uh, quite right, Rob. I think he's trying to defend from the front end, fresh legs up front. Try not to let Hearts bump from the back. Orman's cross, missed by everyone. Three Hearts players all missed it. Now it's Wynas. Given away by Phil Stamp. Brown in turn gives it back. That's good play from Stamp. Holds it into the stride of Austin McCann. He turns away from O'Connor. Webster's header, now Dumbe. Dobby showed too much of it to Webster, but he might still have the chance as it ricocheted back to him. Off his line came Treffy Moyle in him. Almost a chance there for Hibbs, just through pure determination. It's Kenny Smith. Scott Severin on the ball for Hearts to Alan Mabry in the 65th minute at Easter Road, 20 minutes gone in the second half. Still goalless. This match hasn't wanted for any drama, that's sure. Scott Severn linking the play together for Hearts in front of Presley and Webster. That's poor from Austin McCann, holds up his hand to acknowledge it. That's a great challenge from Phil Stamp to win the ball. Gets it back from Boyack. And tried to chip Daniel Anderson. Sets up the opening himself. Sort of a pure execution there from Phil Stump. And this was the chance for Dennis Wynas at the back post, flicked on by Stamp. He had a few yards from Gary Smith, didn't hit the target. I wonder how much of Hearts would have that miss from Wynas. Stephen Dobby, the two subs link up. Good close control. Nobody clears. What's Craig Levine up to, Jack? That's a free kick against the challenge on Wynas. Scott Brown's free kick, Andy Webster first there. Matt Dumbe plays it back in. Austin McCann this time, not a great header. Gary Smith lofts it in. In goes Stephen Dobby, but he's going to struggle against six foot five Moyle in it. <laughs> Gary O'Connor is in trouble, and was that any worse a challenge? Than Grant Brebner's. Rob, you take the words out of my mouth here, that's a worse challenge. If Brebner was sent off for the challenge alone, this is a worse one from Gary O'Connor. It's a swipe, he's no chance of getting the ball, doesn't even try to get the ball. If the first one's a red, that's certainly a red. Yeah, that was much more of a kick, wasn't it, than Brebner's in the first half. Yellow for O'Connor, and of course it was red for Brebner. Hearts. I've made a change, and Kevin McKenna replaces Mark De Vries. That's a straight swap, McKenna will play up front. 
in that target man position. A little joy today for Mark de Vries, apart from that one turn and shot in the first half. I'll say. I'm not too surprised at the change from Hearts Rob. McKean is a similar type of player to de Vries, big target man type. Mark de Vries for me just wasn't fit. You can understand why de Vries had to have been, took the gamble to play him today. Such an effective player, but it just didn't help for him. Even his presence makes a difference, doesn't it, for Hearts? Yeah. Stephen Dobby, played away by Hartley to Boyack. Boyack slipped as Paul uh, Stone tried to link up with him. Money. Some very uh, reckless challenges going in in the last couple of minutes. I tell you, Rob, Stephen Boyer is going to get a yellow card here. It was for the challenge a few seconds ago. It wasn't for the initial foul. It was a late one. Well, I make that seven yellows and a red <laughs> so far, although I may have lost count. I've definitely lost count. As long as that, there, that man there hasn't lost count, we're OK. I wonder what Stuart Dougal will say when he sees the VT back of the first half incident with Matt Bradner. A high boot, caught full stop from Gary Smith. Stephen Presley will be in action for Scotland in Oslo on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock kickoff from 6.45. Live on BBC Two Scotland uh, last March before Scotland played the Faroes and Germany in the upcoming double header. Heading, we hope, for Euro 2004. by Gary O'Connor, who's going to have to be careful. He may be just not long on the pitch, but he's got a yellow already. He's certainly putting himself about, that's for sure. You've got to be careful. You've got to play within the rules of the game. Boy, that's cross picked out of the air by Daniel Anderson, who started the match so nervously with a couple of kickouts, which could have cost his side dear. Now with Severin. Put under pressure by Ian Murray. Severin. Paul Hartley playing down the left side. Wynas. Stamps made a run into the penalty box. He's the target for Severin. Anderson lost it and then dived back and grabbed it as Phil Stamp threatened to score. It's a good move from Hearts, patient to build up the ball through, and Stamp almost getting there, but give Gary Smith credit. Got in between the goalkeeper and the, the Hearts player, enough to put him off and take the danger away. Well, Gary Smith left it to his goalkeeper, but it uh, took a couple of attempts for Anderson to get his hands round it, with Phil Stamp looking to win another Edinburgh derby. 2-1 it was last November when Stamp scored late on. McKenna having equalised in those closing moments as well. Stephen Dobby trying to force his way through. Presley in the way and Webster. Well, I think uh, 
you would struggle to describe this as a thing of great beauty this match but uh, it is so competitive Sander. It's very competitive Rob, uh, both sets of players are working so hard, I think you give Hibs a lot of credit second half, they've defended really well, limited hearts, they've very few chances, the best one obviously being the header from Dennis Wyness. But no time to put your foot in the ball and play passes offside again. Against Kevin McKenna. Bobby Williamson still looking for his first win in the derby as Hibbs manager. Can his team deliver it for him? There is a, the makings of a smile on his face at the moment. I'm sure he'll shell for a point at this moment in time, Rob. A man down, not quite a half time. His team certainly have worked hard for him to need him. I've given it everything I've got. Full focus on the match from Craig Levine as well. Chick? Yeah, I think he's thinking about a change. I think Andy Kirk's going to be introduced into play in a moment. Uh, just to try and grab this winner and tell you exactly who's coming off. But I think you'll see Andy Kirk coming on in a moment, Rob. One thing that should be borne in mind as well about Bobby Williamson's team is that the average age is under 23. Well, that's certainly old as well for Hibs, long term. McCann leaves it to Hartley, now Wynas. Hartley and Wynas, the two new arrivals in the summer for Hart. Neither has made a terrific impression here. Levine hopes Wynas in time will add to the strike threat that already exists, of course, with Mark De Vries and Andy Kirk still on the bench. I think, Rob, well, when you look at Dennis Wynas, the first goal for, for Hearts is going to be the important one. Once he gets that, I'm sure he'll build on it confidence-wise. Stephen Dobby, beaten by Stephen Presley, and helped out by Scott Severin. Well, we were talking about Dennis Wyness and Andy Kirk, and there will be a swap shortly. With Kirk coming on, scored late on last week. Austin McCann to Paul Hartley. And an offside flag again for Scrapes, Kevin McKenna. Again, you give the Hibs back four credit, Rob. Managed to hold the line, didn't step inside the penalty spot. Strikers will always want to take the chance, change that a little bit forward. And that's why that time they were caught offside. So that's the end of the match for Dennis Wyness. Andy Kirk will replace him. Uh, Northern Irish man who's scored ten times last season. He knows where the goals are and scored one of the goals against Aberdeen last weekend. Come on as a sub last weekend as well, Rob. Hips of a free kick. Seven players along the edge of the box. They don't have too many more. Scott Brown's cross, beyond this, Zambardardi! Well, the hope was that Stephen Dobby might have got on the end of this. It's a great ball from Zambardardi, put in the right area, difficult to score from there. Trying to put in the danger spot. So Edinburgh Derby this week, and the other Glasgow Derby next week from 10 past 12. BBC One Scotland, Partick Thistle against Celtic. That's the live match. Gary O'Connor and Stephen Dobby, the two substitutes for Hibbs. Here's O'Connor. Played in too close to the keeper. No challenge on Teppi Moylanen.
Can I set up? Orman. Scott Brown left grounded by Phil Stump's challenge. Uh, Matt Doombe not one to panic at the edge of his own area, is he? He almost get caught. Andy Kirk was trying to sneak the ball off him. Let me remind you, there is no man of the match competition today, but there is a man of the match. So the champagne will be delivered, sadly, for Chick. Boyax cross, in with McKenna. Matt Doombe was doing the defending. It's a good ball in. McKenna just about getting there. But Doombe put him under enough pressure to put him off. despite the yells of the Hibs supporters. Gary Smith's had a very steady game, Sandy. The, the Hibs back four, Rob, we, we mentioned them at the start of the game, so important to play as a unit, defend well, and you've got to say they've done that. It's a real good effect today. Every one of them across that back line have played well. As has Ian Murray in front of them, trying to play the captain's role and protect them. Gary Smith off the pitch, meantime. I think there must be some uh, blood leaking out of a cut on his head. Uh, Stuart Dougal wants him off the pitch. Well, Hibbs made a meal of defending that. They do have a free kick, but the ball was bouncing about inside the danger area there. With Andy Kirk waiting to pounce. It's always dangerous when that happens. The ball in the box here, no one attacks the ball, that makes it dangerous. Andy Kapp just taking the yeah, Arco Vise out of the game. Again, taking the pressure off the defence. Not much more than uh, 10 minutes of regulation time left. 40 fouls or so, so far. Seven yellow cards, one red. And a supporter careering towards the referee at half-time. Alan Maybury. Puts it in front of Kevin McKenna, but Ian Murray can let that go. And that sort of ammunition is not really going to ask any great questions of Hibbs. No, it's, the ball's too long. But Ian Murray's playing centre back at this moment in time. Gary Smith went off the field. He's so versatile. Still Dundee nailed on Fermlin 1 at Dens. Lee Wilkie's own goal separates those two. And if Dunfermlin can get a win. Up at Dens Park, it will be a terrific start to the season for them, having drawn at home with Celtic last weekend. And either will want to do something about that, having started well themselves, winning at Motherwell, winning in Albania. That's the first goal they've conceded this season in competitive play. Here's Phil Stamp for Kevin McKenna with the knockdown. Andy Kirk should have laid it back for Scott Severo, and he was screaming for it. He's got to play it back, Rob. What an opportunity, great run from Stamp, good header from McKenna in the danger area. And this bat here, Kirst is going to lay it back, seven ready to pounce, 13 yards out. Alan Oma wanted too much time on the ball, Stephen Boyack wasn't letting him have it. Severin to Maybury. Hart's looking to apply some more pressure. Challenged by Zambernardi, but takes at the expense of a free kick. Didn't see too much in that one. Maybury Zambernardi both trying to win the ball. Free kick going Hart's way. I think it was all about trapping the ball between his legs while well, it was on the ground, Sandy, and not releasing it. But uh, not an awful lot in it. Could be a useful set piece chance for Hart's. From Paul Hartley, it's beyond Presley. Orban heads it behind, corner kick. No choice here, Alan Orman. Facing his own goal, he's got to put the ball out of the field. Well, that's a busy little six yard box, isn't it? <laughs> Good luck to Daniel Anderson. Looks like Princess Street in there. Stephen Boyack plays it in, the goalkeeper gets a good punch. 
Now Mabry to Severin. Sliding in was Gary Smith. It's another corner. Good chance from Gary Smith. This is a vital part of the match for, for him, Rob Anderson. Making the right choice here, great points from the cross. They've got to concentrate in the last part of the game. They're a man down, they'll be tired now. Hibs and Hearts players getting up close and personal. Stuart Dugan trying to drive them apart. Paul Hartley looks to set something up for Kevin McKenna. Oh, he's disappointed with himself. That was a useful headed opportunity, couldn't keep it down. You've got to get on target. It's a free header, he gets half a yard, that's all you need inside the box. Doombe's lost him. And really you've got to go over the ball and make sure you get it between the sticks. Well, for the second time in the second half for Hart, a headed chance. First Wynas, then McKenna, couldn't keep it down. Let's hear from Trick, if it didn't hear anybody with the din going on. Yeah, the atmosphere is brilliant and a real powwow between the Bobby Williamson and Jenny McCabe and Jim McClatt. They were going to bring on Stephen Clatt, then they delayed the substitution. They're having a real thing. I think they want to sit in and keep what they've got. I think we will see Glass shortly. They're not sure to take off. The up and under from Austin McCann. Hit it down by Kevin McKenna. What a save, Daniel Anderson. But the offside flag was up. It wouldn't have counted had it gone in. The goalkeeper didn't know that at all. It's a fabulous save. Full stop again, getting forward. Just half a... Half a foot offside as much as anything else, but what a magnificent save from Anderson. Great reflexes, brave, standing up. That's a great save with his right leg. Well, it could have been an amazing first Edinburgh derby for Paul Hartley had he been able to put the ball in the back of the net. Hartley foiled by Anderson's save, and it remains nil nil. He started so nervously, but that's a pretty stylish finish. And talking about finish, Jakovic is off and replaced by Stephen Glass after all that deliberation on the touchline. The former Aberdeen, Newcastle and Watford wide man. wonder if he can do some damage in these closing stages. <laughs> Boy out Rob Zorman. Alan Orman recovers, but he's given away a free kick. Another chance for Hearts to get the ball into the box towards Kevin McKenna. It's another dangerous area. Paul Hartley normally takes a free kick from that type of area, but Stephen Boyax takes the responsibility this time. Stephen Boyax, right foot, Matt Doombe's header. In went Hartley with a suspicion of handball. Orman clears. McCann for Kirk. Zambonardi just gets rid of it. <laughs> Nearly 86 minutes gone of the first Edinburgh derby of the season. A goal at this stage might just win it. I say might because sometimes when you get one goal here, you get quite a few. Good ball winning from Phil Stamp. Not a bad pass for Andy Kirk. Kevin McKenna waits. And there was pushing going on in the penalty box. And the decision goes against McKenna. What a save from Daniel Anderson to deny Paul Hartley his moment of glory here. It's great reflexes. McKenna does well to win the header. Hartley going forward just a fraction too early. That's why he's offside. And the goalkeeper doesn't know that at the time. Stevie Crawford has scored late on at Dens and Dunfermline heading for maximum points, having drawn with Celtic on the opening day. 2 0, and that's a boost for Scotland striker Stevie Crawford as he too heads for Norway in midweek. Dundee 0, Dunfermline 2, Hibbs 0, Hearts 0 here at Easter Road. But uh, you would make no assumptions about how this is going to finish until that final whistle goes. 
offside is given against Gary O'Connor. He's not happy. He reckoned he was looking along the line and he was keeping himself on. It looked very close to me as well, Rob. It shouldn't be offside. He can look along the whole width of the pit. Very, very close. That's well won by Orman. Out of Boyac. minutes left of the 90. Stephen Dobby tries to get the ball down. Webster wins it. Then it's Stephen Glass. Had it and then lost it. Dangerous pass that one. Zambernardi rushed the shot and he's hurt himself in the process. It looks like the Frenchman is in trouble. He was immediately Gesturing towards Stuart Dougal, no, no, not that sort of gesture, the one that says get the physio on quickly. It looks a sore one as well. Good play from Zabernardi. Very aggressive, very determined. It's a cross field pass and Zabernardi gets there first. No real contact made, just outside of his left ankle, the looks of things. Just looked uh, as he stumped that left foot on the ground, something went. And uh, not surprisingly, concern expressed in the faces of Bobby Williamson and Jim Park. All three subs have gone. Zambanardi can't continue. Yeah, it doesn't look that like, uh, Zambanardi is going to be able to make any sort of contribution here. He can barely walk to the touchline. Let's hear from Chick. Well, they're just trying to decide what to do, Bobby Williamson. Jerry McCabe just reorganising things, says Zabernardi. They're still hopeful they might go back on, believe it or not, Rob. And Bobby is actually just telling him gently it might be a good idea if he did go back on. <laughs> it's about that new contract, Yannick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a recovery of which Lazarus might be proud from Yannick Zabernardi. Well, just a second ago, couldn't walk, now he's going to run, apparently. No way through for Phil Stamp. Scott Brown has it. The 18-year-old who's shown a lot of maturity here. Uh, Stephen Dobby's given it away. Out for a hard throw. 90 minutes played at Easter Road. We're inside stoppage time. Three minutes will be added. Plenty of time for a goal. Kevin McKenna towards Andy Kirk. And Daniel Anderson can let it go. Who's your man of the match, Andy? I tell you, Robert, uh, there's been a lot of good performances today, but I think you've got to look at the Hibs team. They've worked so hard, they've been so well organised, second half been down to ten men, but that man there, the captain, Ian Murray, he's led by example, he's played different positions, he's really getting stuck in, drove his team forward, worked them hard, and that's why he's not back to Scotland by the match. And you would imagine he will go on to become a regular Scotland player in the years to come if he continues his development. Good work from Stephen Dobby, the sub. Plays it in front of Gary O'Connor. Surely won the Edinburgh Derby right at the death. The two subs combine, and O'Connor's shot was unstoppable. Moylan and threw himself down, but the shot had enough power to find its way through. Hibbs one half nil. Great play from O'Connor, driving forward, using his strength, his pace. The important thing here, Robbie, gets on target. It's a good ball to him. He keeps his head down, fires it. The goalkeeper should save it, but he doesn't, it's on target. If he misses it, it's going to be a goal. And that looks to me as if it's going to be the winner. And that's how much the goal meant to Gary O'Connor and the Hibs fans. 92 minutes when Gary O'Connor struck. There will be recriminations, I'm sure, about the part played in that by Teppi Moylan, and who got his body down, but not quickly enough to prevent the ball slithering underneath him. 
but you would have to say of Gary O'Connor's shot that it carried a lot of power and pace and it was on target and it was always going to be a difficult one to stop and hold. It was, but you look at the part played by Stephen Dobie, it's a great ball to him, but there was three Haas defenders round about O'Connor, so you can't just blame the goalkeeper. By that's header, that's Dumbe. It's not all over yet. Andy Webster. Anderson saves by that shot. And the follow-up effort from Stephen Presley goes wide. A real chance for Hearts to square the game. It should have been an equaliser. Webster leaves this one to Boyack. Gets on target. A great save again. It's Stephen Presley. Just can't get his head round the ball. Webster tries to get there. Leaves it to Boyack. Great save again from the goalkeeper. And Presley can't wrap his head round the ball to keep it on target. It's an agonising moment, this, as it was pummed away by Anderson, and he could only look on as a bystander as Presley's header went wide. Andy Kirk was down on the goal line, there was nothing he could do about it. Presley's header off target, and that was the chance to make it 1-1. And it was also the last chance of the game. A game packed with drama, packed with passion. And Bobby Williamson enjoys his first derby win as Hibbs manager. And it was won right at the very end, two minutes inside, stoppage time, when Gary O'Connor, set up by his fellow substitute Stephen Dobby, struck. It was a powerful shot which Tippy Moylanen couldn't hold, he couldn't stop it, it hit the net, and Hibbs make it two wins out of two at the start of the new season. There are supporters on the pitch, which will prompt another inquiry, no doubt. This is not what anyone wants to see after a fan attacked Stuart Dougal, the referee, at the end of the first half, and not surprisingly, a ring of security around the referee as he heads in at full time. This much making headlines for all the wrong reasons. As far as the football goes, it's Hibs who have the upper hand, Hibs who have the bragging rights until the next one, because Gary O'Connor's goal Two minutes into stoppage time has won the game. Here's the man of the match, Ian Money. Ian, that was a quiet afternoon at the office, wasn't it? Oh, it was really quiet. I, um, you get a noise out there what meant to us as players and fans and managers got his first win. What a boys. What a, join us, Rose off. Rose off, start of season. I mean, that's, that's for them, really, more than anything else. Generally, it's relief for you to get a victory over Hearts, isn't it? Not relief, I wouldn't say relief. We believe we can do it. We've shown it today. We've got six points out of six, and we're going to carry the away. It's, it's a great win for us, obviously. Uh, meet the ball in the right box. You clearly felt ill done by, by the by the ordering off of, of Grant Bremner and that seemed to bond the team together. Yep, I've seen that in the Festival Cup. I, know, I didn't say to anyone that day. I saw a lot of strength and togetherness in the squad. I've not said to anyone apart from now. And I think today we needed that. Grant was harsh. It was harsh on Grant. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I saw him in the tunnel at the end. He was obviously delighted that he'd gone on and won the game. Yeah, of course, it's cost on suspension now and it's, it's hindered our squad. Um, but at the moment, we just have to concentrate on today and, and take all this in. This, this is a, a very young squad, I think the average age is less than 23, that is, it augurs well for the future of Hibs. Yeah, of course it does, it, may, it might take us a long time to gel. Um, one thing we have got is, is youth and enthusiasm, which is a game we've seen today. We will close everything down and run hard, and we've got a reward. And I've got a bottle of Bank Scotland champagne for you, man of the match, I'm sure that'll be useful tonight, Ian. Yeah, all right. Well Cheers. done. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Cheers. The Edinburgh Derby rapidly becoming absolutely required viewing and uh, the Hibs team who suffered so badly last season through conceding late goals, notably in that new year Edinburgh Derby, have got one of their own two minutes into injury time. A remarkable ending and I can't help feeling, Gordon, that justice really was done in the end, wasn't it? I, I think it was. I think that uh, Hibs had been the better side even at the stage when they lost bread on the first half and uh, you know they, they still continue to, to play good football, they still tried to play, they, they did leave attacking players on the field and as the game went on Hearts began to apply a bit of pressure, long ball up to McKenna was a threat, they had one or two situations but definitely uh, Hibs deserved to win. Mm. Disappointing day for Hearts certainly but I think we saw all over Bobby Williamson's face just how much this victory means to him, here he is with Chick. Bo Bobby, I know you're trying to lose a bit of weight. That's an interesting way to go about it. <laughs> I know. I wish I thought about it years ago. It was some afternoon, wasn't it? Uh, very eventful. What about the ordering off? I can't comment on that, Jack. 
I think your lack of words maybe say a lot. No, don't start reading any of what I'm not saying. All right, well, let's talk about the football in the game. Not that it was a thing of beauty, but uh, I tell you, it was, but it, it was exciting, wasn't it? Well, there was a couple of cards brandished early on, and uh, I felt that uh, didn't help the game uh, because uh, players are walking tight ropes after that. And uh, as I said, it was never going to be a classic afterwards. What you did show was incredible team spirit, and you obviously the side bonded in, in the wake of the ordering off. Well, we had to work hard for it. Hearts uh, made us work hard, and uh, credit to the guys, uh, they stayed together, they worked hard. Got a few breaks near the death, obviously, and uh, we got our goal, so. Well, dead, please. And what a goal it was, Gary O'Connor came on for you, but I think we can have a, have a look at it. I mean, a tremendous drive and run. Toby's done brilliant, he's, he showed good composure. And it's a great wee ball outside his right foot, and Gary O'Connor in that position just drills it. And uh, the goalkeeper's not managed to get it, thankfully. Gary O'Connor's in an interesting time <coughs> here, but again... It's as as we all have. As we, <laughs> indeed. But it, it's a little message back to you that he wants to get back into the, the first... Of course it they, they all do, and as I said, it's not easy picking a team when uh, you've got a lot of talented kids running about, and uh, he's been hard done by, but he showed what he can do uh, when he came on there and uh, scored his goal. But we knew he's capable of that, and uh, I'm just glad he got the opportunity to show us. I remember there used to be a dull, boring fixture about change days, Bobby. Well, I uh, <laughs> don't know if I prefer them more boring, as long as, <laughs> as, long as you win them, check. Whenever you lie down, son, well oh, done. I will do, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby Wilson probably quite rightly refusing to comment on the ordering off. Uh, we certainly have here in the studio at halftime. Let's take another look at that red card for Grant Brebner. Uh, and again, where a lot of yellow cards were shown early on, as Bobby Williamson mentioned, and that perhaps set the tone. And, and uh, I think it's fair to say that Stuart Dugall probably got this one wrong, Stuart. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure he got it wrong. The, I think the best thing about the late goal from O'Connor means that we don't have to focus on it as much as we would have had to if, if Hearts had gone on to win the game, for instance. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, uh, uh, Bobby just touched on the fact that the referee had made a lot of uh, um, you know, bookings early on and, and, and really had, had players uh, a little bit nervous. And, and you don't want to see that. It's a, it's a derby. You want to see a competitive match. Mm. And the game seemed to, seemed to die a death for, for mm. 20 minutes or half an hour in the second half. But obviously livened up towards the end. Yeah. Hibs will be hugely encouraged, not just by the result, Gordon, but by the display, particularly in the first half, because they're the better team, without a doubt. I think they will be. Most people go into this expected Hearts to win it, and Hearts will be mm. favourites, but I thought Hibs were the better side in the early part of the game. They will be encouraged, but the young players did really well, and uh, you know they've got a result, so Bobby Williamson will be delighted, but it'll, it'll be a real boost from having six points from two games. Yeah, well, indeed, yeah. And Hearts, well, it was a disappointing day for them. They, they didn't play as we expected them to, did they? No, I think they were, they were going to be disappointed to end up with a draw, mm. but they've lost a bad goal. I mean, I have to say, that I think it's a goalkeeping error. I mean, mm. although uh, Gary Conn did well, if you're a defender and he's running through there, you're, you're shouting, almost shoot, because you want him to shoot from that angle, because mm. it shouldn't be a threat. I thought Moylan and spilled it underneath him. He should definitely have saved it. Yeah, would you go along with that, Stuart? This goalkeeping mistake? Yeah, I think uh, just uh, the good good play by Stephen Dobby, uh, quick feet and a, a nice weighted pass through. But I think the fullback, uh, McCann, should be tucked in further. He hasn't got a wide player to worry about because Hibs are down to 10 men. Uh, and as Gordon mentioned, you know the, the, the angle that he's, he's out there, the keeper must cover his near post. Uh, I think it's a, a, you know, a poor show from him there. Yeah, well, I think we can now see that uh, sending off of Grant Rebner in the first half. Uh, didn't seem to be a great deal in it. Robert Sloan running across him. Uh, was there an intent here? Was this violent conduct? He does look to try and possibly pull him down, but there wasn't a whole lot in that, surely. No, I think that's a yellow card. And if we look at consistency as well, Gary O'Connor had a tackle not unlike that in the second half as well and got away with it. Sure. Here's the goal. As I say, that, uh, you even see that uh, Andy Webster's mm. body language said he's not even wanting to put a challenge in there because he's, he's almost thinking, yeah, shoot from there. I've got you wide now, wide position. Goalkeeper oh, you underneath can't, You them. can't lose it in the near post there, Stuart, can you? No, no, we touched mm. on it. We, I think we all said that straight away as soon as we saw the shot. Mm. And, um, you know, certainly the, when the defender has pushed a striker wide, you think you've done your job. Mm. Yeah. And just a, a last thought, we had a, a fan coming onto the pitch at the half-time appearing to head for Stuart Dougal. We had a lot of Hibs fans absolutely delighted with the result coming on at the end. We can't have this. We've got to stamp this out in the game. No, I think the fans have to learn that, you know, the last place it should be is on the field. But uh, that certainly was an invasion at the end. One fan coming on is not an invasion, but that <laughs> was at the end. Depends what size he is. <laughs> uh, at Dens Park, Dunfermline picked up three points with a 2-0 win over Dundee and I think we can see the highlights of that match now and uh, in the first half, uh, Nacho Noble looking pretty lively and uh, his layoff to Steve Lovell here, no relation to the man sitting alongside me, the less talented of the Lovell boys and that just came off the outside of the post there and Lovell again involved in the, another Dundee attack, this in the first half of the match and uh, this again for Noble. 
So Dundee looking lively early on after their journey back from Albania and that fine uh, European result. But this was the goal just before half-time, a Scott Wilson free kick and Lee Wilkie is making a disturbing habit of turning the ball past his own keeper. Two, of course, against Rangers last year. Scored at the right end last week at Firhill, but uh, you can't really defend this. This is poor defending, there's no he's doubt He's a real it. threat at both ends, the <laughs> field big uh, Lee, there's no doubt about that. That's yeah. uh, an incredible finish. And then into the, the second half then, and that's... Uh, a close one there for Gavin Ray, not quite getting on to the end of it. And then just towards the end, and Fairland already 1-0 up. And then the 1-2 here with uh, Gary Dempsey and Stevie Crawford tucks it away. Then Fairland pick up three points to go with the point they got at East End Park last week with a 2-0 win. That's a very good win for them, Fairland, Gordon. Excellent win for them. You know, I mean, they started the season well with the, the, the result at, at the, uh, mm. East End Park for the first game, getting a point there from mm. Celtic. Looks like a good result at the time but mm. when you see what Celtic went on to do mm. yesterday. But uh, that's an excellent win to win at Dens Park. A lot of people are, are considering Dundee to be right up there, third place or whatever this season. And uh, Dunfermline have started mm. well. Yeah, all right. Well, let's uh, before we leave you, just give you the uh, latest and final scores from the Barthacourt Premiership today. At uh, the Valley, Charlton 0, Manchester City 3. Anelka, Sibieska and Jihai, the scorers for Manchester City. Charlton also had Mark Fish sent off. Leeds United 2, Newcastle 2. Uh, Jarl and Shearer with both goals for Newcastle, one of them a penalty. Uh, Viduka and Smith getting the goals for Leeds. And it's currently Liverpool 0, Chelsea 1. Uh, that goal coming from Juan Sebastian Veron. Half-time at the moment at Anfield and Chelsea are 1-0 up. More live football to come this week, of course, on Wednesday night. Uh, Scotland are in action in Oslo. It's Norway, Scotland. We'll have it live for you. BBC Two Scotland from 6.45. Join us for international football Wednesday night, Norway, Scotland from 6.45. It's been an eventful Edinburgh derby from Stuart, from Gordon and from me. Bye for now.